and we welcome you back to Inside Foose's coverage of the 2024 Kentucky State Championships. Got a good one for you here on table number one and open doubles on the left of your screen. That's going to be the team formerly out, entirely out of Florida of Tommy Yor and Eric Hiltner on the right. That's going to be Mike Wierowski out of Michigan and Jacob Balco's out of Minnesota. Promises to be a good one. This is still on the winner side. We are in a championship format, so if you end up in the loser's bracket, you are eliminated from contention for the one, first or second place finish. This one for ninth or better. Tommy and Eric, the one seed. Jacob and Mike, the 16 seed. Pretty sure I got that right. My name is Keith Glenn. I have the pleasure of jo being joined by my good friend, mentor, and co-founder of the First Coast Foods Academy, Perry Palacio. Perry, thanks for joining me. All right, thanks for having me. And I would also like to take this opportunity to welcome those who are joining us now as we are free on Twitch and YouTube for the next few hours as we move through this open doubles bracket. So happy to have you all along with us here. Yeah, trying to see what the bracket looks like. Yeah, the winner of the... Oh, we got another good one coming up. I hope we get that one on one. It'll be Pappas and Mary against the oh. Cody... Uh, oh, and Dijon. Dijon. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. That'll be a great one. So the winner of this will go on to play the winner of that. So I hope we get that one. Uh, also uh, on InsideFoods.com, Table 3, Cody Byrie and Sam Dijon, Open Doubles Partners, currently squaring off in Open Singles. Right on Table 3. Uh, all right. Looks, uh, Mr. Wierowski seems to have vacated the pit. I don't see him. I haven't caught a lot of games with uh, um, Jacob. Yeah, uh, Jacob. Jacob. Yep, yep. Very good player. Come along nicely. He was one pro singles as Mr. Wierowski re enters the pit. Yeah, I'm very impressed with the siblings playing once yes, again. They played open mix together and did very well. They eliminated Brandon Munoz and Isabel Stelly, who have several open mix titles together. A little bit of warm up time here for these players. As we saw Tommy Yor in a very exciting five game. Very good game. Open singles final against Ryan Moore. Unfortunately, he came up just a little bit short. Went down quick, two games, nothing. And Fought his way back. Yeah, fours to fifth, but Ryan's two bar got cooking. Hit four out of his five goals from the two bar before finally putting it away from the three. But cool to see Tommy fight like that to get back to that fifth game. Yeah, very then, admirable. It was yes. really, really, really great, great show to see. And this is our first look at the one seed here in this open doubles event with Tommy and Eric. Tommy, of course, former open doubles world champion. His partner he won that championship with is here playing. He, but his partner, Brandon Moreland, is playing with his uncle, Mike. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. Open doubles. Family so. first. Yes. <laughs> Moreland like, apparently likes his yours. As we are set to get underway, Jacob Balco is putting the ball into play. And hits a nice little runner up through the lane. Chance to open scoring here. Fires on the middle. Eric opened that up one too many times. As we get right underway here, Tommy hammers that one along the wall. Walks, re-grips, walks. Tries to fire back to the far side, and Wierowski able to turn him away. It's Mike Wierowski looking to clear here. And he is unable to do so on the first. A little sneeze pause. Don't rat me out, Perry. I was trying to get that one away from the mic. <laughs> As Mike looking to clear here. Oh. 
Oh, Ooh, beautiful pass nice. from Wierowski to Valcos. Tries to come quick to the near side. And Tommy comes up with the rebound. Tries to come near side. Tommy again. Fires that one deep to the far side, and we are tied up at one apiece. Nice shot there from Tommy. Nice little high lane there for Balcos. Oh. Puts that one into the wall. So Eric sprays that one long out of that bank setup. Nice shot selection there. Gives his team a 2-1 lead. Eric, one of the better goalies you're going to see out on tour. Knows his job, and every once in a while, he'll bust out something flashy right when his team needs it. It also defensive switches. He plays great five bar D2. As Yor walks that one off center before firing to the short side on the pole. And Tommy gets to take away on Jacob. As Tommy Yor. So crisp. Pounding that more pass. Walks, tries to fire down the middle. Mike comes up with a block. Tommy can't pick that one up. So Wierowski now looking to clear. Oh. And an unfortunate turnover there is Tommy Yor now. Gifted a three bar possession. Tries to go down the middle, can't get it. Fires that one wide, does Wierowski, and Balco can't get it. quite dig it out. Oh, they call him for a draw, or they give up a draw. Good sportsmanship. Okay. So Balcos now with a three bar possession. Fires that one deep to the near side. That cuts the lead in half now, 3 2. Tommy unable to get that wall. Jacob's bump up off the mark. So again, Eric Hiltner drives the inside bank. Jacob turns it back his way. Oh, and gets possession. Nice. Aw. There's Mike. Excuse me, Jacob finds his way through the lane there. Fires to the near side. Cuts in the lead again now, 4-3. But it is game ball and timeout called. I think Tommy and Eric called that one in the 4-3 lead. I appreciate the kind words, Lindsay, if you can hear me. I always like getting nice messages as we're sitting here and talking to myself all weekend, but not <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> as we are backing away here, Tommy oh. mis-executes the pass, but if you're going to do it, do it in the direction of the goal. And that is how game one comes to a close. Let's both practice passing on the same <laughs> yeah. side of the table. Problem with these far wall passers. So let's see if Jacob and Mike can find an answer here. I mean, I mean, this is a world champion caliber team on the left here. As Jacob able to grab that one. Fires quick down the middle. It's one nothing now in favor of Balcos and Murawski. Tommy, chance to respond here. Walks, regrips. Walks and fires near side, but a little bit of a mis-execution mis there. Mike unable to clear. Tommy with the takeaway. And 
Tommy taps and goes back to the far side, tied up at one apiece. Balcos goes the long way as Tommy gets a big piece of that, but able to grab it on the three. Oh, nice oh. shot on goal from Mike Wierowski. Yeah, reset. And Wierowski now looking to clear. Unable, oh, almost oh, dug out oh, by oh, Tommy, oh. but ends back up with Eric. Oh, nice pass, but Tommy can't hang on. As Balcos doesn't waste any time popping that up through the lane. Looking to regain the lead here. Tries to go far side, can't get it. And Tommy again almost digs that out, but Jacob comes up with it. Jacob pounds that one through to the second man. Eric is showing him a lot of straight. Oh and no. he loses the handle. As Tommy goes to the second man there, nicely executed. Long third ball here. As Tommy come, tries to come down the middle, grabs his own rebound on the five. Derek's turn now. Tries to come down the middle. Jacob there waiting for him. Tries to pass. Tries to pass again. Oh. And Jacob gets a big chunk of it, but it dribbles through to Tommy's three bar. Fires back to the okay. near side, and he finally converts. It's now 2-1. Nice shot. That was a long one. Yes, it was. For this group. <laughs> Balcos now, chance to respond, tries to do the same thing Tommy just did a moment ago, but Eric there waiting for him. There's Eric surveying, tries to clear. And Tommy with those very quick hands at least puts the pressure back on Mike to try and clear. Spikes that one back his way. Fires near side, and that ties things up now 2-2. Two, two. Tommy not wasting any time going along the wall there. Fires on the middle, nice shot for Tommy Yor. Makes it 3-2. And Tommy Yor gets enough of that to keep it off Jacobs. Three bars, so now Eric Hiltner. Going a little bit of a different look here. As oh. Balco stuffs that one back in the goal, ties things up 3 3. Don't want to see Eric go back to that one. As Tommy tries to lean and Jacob gets the steal. Nice. Good lane there from Balco says he's rocking. Surveying walks, fires near wow. side. And now it is 4 3 in favor of Jacob and Mike. Trying to tie up the game. Tommy's counter. quick on that one. And oh, 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 over. Potentially costly turnover. As Tommy oh. tries to fire, but <coughs> can't connect. Oh. So Wayrowski will call timeout and look to clear. Nice fight on the right side. Yeah, not going away. Well, I mean, it's still in the second game, but they have right, a chance right. to put away game two here. So, Irowski will put the ball back into play. Fires that one up the table. So, back on Eric here. And he indeed does go back to the bank series.
Tries to go outside. Jacob all over it. Sprays a push kick down the table. And Tommy with the takeaway. And Tommy nice. fires down the middle. Nice shot there. And it's now 4-4. Nice. Oh, good discipline there from Tommy to stay put. Gets the steal and calls timeout. And Jacob Balcos expresses some frustration. Wishes he had that one back. And we are going to have a short time on as Tommy puts the ball back into play. Oh. Jacob gets a piece of that one, so Wierowski now. Oh, fight for the ball. Nice job to keep that out. Tommy sent a missile back his way. And nice pickup by Tommy Yor. Walks, regrips. And fires back near side. Wow. And good come from behind victory there in game number two. To take a two game to nothing lead for Tommy Yor and Eric Heltner. Balcos and Mayrowski had their chance. Let it get away. See how they respond here in game number three. How do you think uh, the uh, uh, experience? Considering oh, yeah, absolutely. That's right. I mean, Jacob went for that he th he change up kind of wall pass there at the end that gave you know, Tommy got the steal on. You can't do that against a guy as fast as Tommy. He's not jumping on your slow stuff. Nice, Jacob goes with the high lane there. Wow. Fires near side, nice shot. It's one nothing now in favor of Balcos and Mirowski. Good deal, good deal. Uh, Jacob now, back to work. Able to get that one down that time. I think he went inside Tommy Brown there. As Balcos now. Wow, really feeling that pull wow. side now. Hammered that thing, and he's got a 2 nothing lead. Oh, that was a fast two. I was wondering if the confidence is going to the aggressiveness, right? Yeah. Trying. Oh. And Wayne Rowski fires one Three. home. They get out to an early, quick 3 to nothing lead here. So quick. great response from the team on the right. After Stay in the game. Dropping a lead to lose game two. They come out gunning. Set to get back underway here. Tommy going back to work on the five. Seems like taking his time a little bit here. Yeah, there you pops go. that one nice. through the lane. Dead rock. Nice. Taps and goes middle. Man, that was nasty. <laughs> and this is something Eric Hiltner does very well here. The five bar defense. He's going to get it and just call timeout for Tommy. And he gets a piece of it. And now Tommy Yor with the possession in the back. Running that bank series. And he oh. hits an outside bank. And nice just job. like that, it's a 3-2 ball understand. game. Oh, that was quick. That nice wall pass there for Valcos. Walks, regrips, tries to go far side, grabs his own rebound on the five. Ball kicks around, and it ends up with Tommy Yor. Sets back up for the bank series. Tries it again. This time, Dockers grabs it. Tries to come down, Eric. Even Jacob Fitz on the five there. Yeah, you're not kidding, Ed. Tommy tries a rolling outside bank that time. Couldn't connect. Gets it back. Tries it inside, Ooh. and turns it over. Balcos now. Trying to go quick to the far side. Can't grab the rebound. And Tommy Yor calls timeout and says, hey, Eric, you get back here and get rid of this thing. <laughs> 
Oh, oh. Beautiful pass from Eric, but Tommy couldn't hang on. Tommy gets the steal. Wow, nice. wastes no time with the near wall stick lane. Hammered that thing. Now Tommy walks. Oh. Beautiful shot. Got it on goal, but Wierowski able to get out there. And oh, Tommy and the York Dean and even. Gets the defensive block to knock it back into the goal and tie things up. Three unanswered from Joran Hiltner as Eric gets back up front. Jacob works that through to the second man. Tommy tries that rolling outside bank again, and Eric comes up with it. And we should see their second timeout. Nope, Eric going to pass. Why not? Eric's, I mean, Eric's got a very good forward game, too. He's known for his goalie game, but very capable forward. Tries to go far side, can't get it. You're going to see less walking around out of Eric, from what I recall. Been a while since I've seen him play up. Oh, nice two to wow. five there, or goalie rod to five. Balco's. And Jacob able to go the long way off Tommy's guys to get that one back. Tommy gets the block. Nice. And Tommy Orr shoots a push shot on goal. Nice shot, but Wierowski able to keep it out. And oh. he hits a slider, and they regain the lead now 4-3. Tommy and Eric switch back. Wierowski coming up big when needed. And Balcos now trying to put away game number three. Tries to come near okay. side, and Eric gets the block. That ball flies halfway across the room. Mr. Wierowski retrieves it. So Eric and Tommy take possession, trying to put this to bed in three games here. Tries the outside bank. Tommy can't grab the rebound. Mike reels it in. Tries the pass. Tommy does a nice job to keep it off Jacob's three bars that got by him. Eric sprays a push shot on goal. Oh, and oh. Tommy with another defensive goal. Right. Puts that one back in on Mike, and it's now match ball in favor of Eric and Tommy. And Tommy almost gets the steal, but it ends up with Wierowski. Taking his time, serving. Fires a shot at the table, fight for the ball in the air, and Eric Hiltner comes up with it. Ball kicking around. Eric does a nice job to reel it in. Oh, wow. not the way they drew it up, but that was the end result they wanted as Tommy can't get that one to go. And Mirowski now with possession. Ball they have to have to keep the match going. And Tommy blocks that one. And Mirowski wow. fires the push kick to the far corner, and we're going to game number four. Nice job. Nice job. So, a little bit of life left in the team on the right. Trying to see, was that, uh, what's going on in table three? Looks like Mike Philbrook and who's he playing with? Chase Pennell, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's Chase. Squaring off on table three. That's on insidefoos.com over on table two. Blake Robertson and his partner, uh, I think it's Scott, as we are underway Scott here. Watley. Um, sorry, folks. I'm trying to take a peek around the room there. <laughs> Tommy Yorn here. Kiltner got it out to an early 1 0 lead. Eric 
Puts a good shot on goal there. So Wierowski now, the hero of game number three. Sends a pass that Eric Hiltner ends up with. And Eric with another good pass. It's surprising to see these two not connecting. As Wierowski able to find Balkos' five bar. And Jacob, oh. lucky to get that bound back. An audible foot stomp from Tommy Yor as Balkos oh. wastes no time firing that right down the middle. <laughs> Apparently whatever music service we're using is not free. <laughs> and it has ads as that, uh, I think it's a Downey Backstreet Boys commercial yeah. playing. That's awesome. <laughs> Anyway, Mike Wierowski looking to clear. And he goes with the pole kick. And Tommy Yor takes that one out with the shoelaces. Uh, see, fires near side. Wierowski playing good defense on Tommy. Tommy's executing. He's, Mike's just getting the blocks. Fires a shot on goal, and Tommy Yor comes up with the rebound. Oh. Uh, Big left hook for Tommy Yor, and they've got a 2-1 lead. Oh, and Balcos can't hang on to that pass. Only now. Looking push shot. Squared that one up. That's why Rowski now trying to clear. And able to, well, wow. a little unconventional. Well, but Tommy Yor did get a touch on that with his three, so turns into a good two to three pass. As Bell goes, tries to go far side, grabs his own rebound. And Tommy Yor with the pickup. Sets up the rollover off center. Taps, walks, fires deep to the near side, and Mike, nice job getting out there. Eric Kiltner. Tries to go outside, bank, can't get it. Throws a puck, pull kick on goal, and Wierowski able to keep it out, and again, he finds Jacob's three bar. Jacob. Needs to convert, puts that one four-wheel drive. Eric does a nice job keeping it out. And Eric gets the pass, and it's just a little hot. Anyway, Rowski wow. dials up that same push kick he used to win game number three, and we are all tied up at two apiece. Nice job, nice job. Nice, Tommy. The wall. Very tight off the wall there. Tommy Yor. Fires on the middle. We saw this a little bit earlier. Tommy, I don't want to say having three bar problems, but being denied from the three is Jacob calls timeout on the five bar. Looks like he's executing a little better than he was earlier, but Mike doing a great job blocking him. He's had a ton of shots. Certainly, like you uh, described that, some you know, hero shots there in the last mat or the last game. Yeah, no, he's uh, definitely stepped up. And is Jacob ready to resume play here? And a little bit of a break there for Jacob and Mike. As you know, Tommy Quick. Tommy fires that one to the far side, and again, doesn't get it. Mirowski now fires a shot on goal. This time, Eric able to keep it out. Hilton buffing outside bank. Tries the pass, can't connect. He tries a pass, ends up back with Hiltner. Goalie's trading possessions here. Oh, and this time Hiltner nice. drops a dime that Tommy grabs. Very nice, very nice. And he sets up.
Very cramps. Fires back to the far side, and he sprayed it into the wall. Oh, Balcos with no. the steal. Tries to go far side. Balcos able to grab the loose ball. Tries to fire down the middle, can't get it. As Balcos again grabs the loose ball. Hilton there. Challenging him to go middle. Tries to go far side, pounds into the wall. A very slick pickup by Tommy Yor. And he calls timeout. No, wasn't expecting the switch. Neither was I. Tommy losing a little bit of confidence in his three bar here. I mean, that, this is a switch that I would never expect from the team on the left. I mean, Eric, like I said, Eric's got a good forward game, but I mean, they have pretty clearly defined roles on the left. So, Eric Keltner tries to go push side, and Wierowski denies him. As Wierowski, wow. second time he's done that to Eric with the two to, or it's goalie man number five passing. Tries it again. This time Eric picks it off and advances. Nice job hanging on to that ball for Eric. Tries to throw it into a bump kick. Oh, and Mike again. Wierowski dials up a big outside bank. And it is 4-2. They are one ball away from sending it to a fifth and final decisive game as Tommy goes with the off the wall. Fires that there one down the go. middle now, 3-4-3. Three, three. Jacob, Tommy oh, got a big goodness. piece of that, but couldn't keep it off Jacob's three. Tries to go far side, and Eric able to deny him. Tries a push kick, and Jacob picks it off. Wow. And calls time out with a chance to put away the game. Tommy... Expressing a little bit of frustration there. They do not want to send this to a fifth. Good fight on the right. Yeah, it could have rolled over going down two games to nothing, but hard fought win for game three and a 4 4 ball game where Ray Rowski hit a push kick to send it to the fourth, and now they are one ball away from going to a fifth. And Balcos oh. buries it deep to the near side, and he's pumped up, and we are headed to a fifth game. Tommy just trying to find the range on the roll over here. It's like. <laughs> and we are underway. Jacob starts the fifth game with the steal. And oh. Tommy with a defensive five bar spike there, and he's pumped up. As Jacob slows things down, and again, nice. more good five bar D from Tommy. He's digging deep now. This is going to be difficult for Jacob. He's going to have to find something like that. Catch Tommy a little flat-footed as he's got a chance now to tie things up. Goes to the far side, and we're tied at one apiece. And 
Sal Yor hammers that one along the wall. Fires that one deep to the far side. Now 2-1. So Tommy finding his range on his three run. At just the right time. As Jacob can't connect there. Here, thinking about that pass. Throws one near side. And now Mike looking to clear. And Tommy boxed it up off the table, so it'll be Eric's turn to put it in play and try and clear. And Tommy able to work that one up to his three bar. Taking his time here. Tries to get him down the middle, can't get it, and Jacob grabs it on his five. A uh, little bit of discussion, looks like uh, somebody thought. Tommy got jarred, so he's going to take the ball back. Fires to the far side, now 3-1. Okay. So, Tommy making the adjustments. As Jacob be able to work that one through. Uh, Jacob tries to go far side, grabs his own rebound, tries it again. Eric again denies him. Tries to go with the outside bank. Mirowski now. Uh, I guess Tommy got a piece of that. As Jacob tries to double down on the wall there. And God Tommy with the steal. Deal. Now when Tommy clamps down on that fly bar. He tries a left Ooh. hook. Nice job by Jacob to stay home on that one. Patiently tick tacking before slowing it down and trying the far wall pass, but he and Tommy not on the same page there as Wierowski now looking to clear. And Mike can't get that one to go. And Tommy almost picks that one off before the ball kicks around and he eventually grabs it on his five. Good hard wall pass there from Tommy. Taps, regrips. Walks back center, regrips. Fires down the middle. That was a tight fantastic, hold, but he got fantastic. it. And it's All now right. match ball in favor of Tommy York and Eric Hildner. They have flipped the oh. switches. Jacob able to squeak that one through. Lost hand ball for Jacob. He fires down the middle, and that cuts the lead 4-2. Jacob and Mike still need three in a row. And Tommy Yor off the wall, back to the wall, and a chance to put away the match. And Mike comes up with a much-needed stop. Oh, and I don't, <laughs> it wasn't going to go in the goal. It was wide of the goal, so just a really hard pass, but Jacob caught it. There's Jacob fires wow. deep to the near side, and it's now 4-3. So Jacob and Mike not done yet. And Tommy calls timeout. It's turning into a, quite the long match here. These two teams battle it out. A lot of fight on both sides. And we are set to get underway here. Tommy Orr. Tries the second man, and Jacob gets the steal they need. Oh, couldn't hang on with the pass. <laughs> Mike wants to stop and say, hey, I thought you jarred him. I didn't think it was too bad, but Eric and Tommy are good sports. Maybe they did. No, Literally almost no argument. So Jacob now with that three-bar possession. 
Fires down the middle. It's and a big it shot. Is, we wow. are heading to six. We're going to overtime. Here in game number five, our second overtime match of the day. As Tommy marks nice. that one through to the second man. There Fires you down go. the middle, and they'll have oh, the first shot. Yeah, overtime. That's what okay. I mean. Right, 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 right. Okay. Nice fight. So Tommy gets the steal he needs, trying to make this a 6-4 victory. He hammers that one along the wall, and he's going to have a chance to put it away. He says, hey, let's talk about it. That's their second. Why not? You got a chance to get it, put it away. You don't want this one going down to 7-7. Seven, seven. Mike Wierowski has done an excellent job blocking Tommy Yor. He's taken a ton of shots. He needs one more. Fantastic job. Good job, good job. Tommy Yor. <laughs> Been digging deep here to fight back after they struggled in game four, dominating early in game five. Tommy Yor for the match. Fires nice. near side and in overtime by a score of six to four in the fourth, or excuse me, fifth. Tommy Yor and Eric Hiltner win a very hard fought game to advance to ninth or better in open doubles. Meanwhile, Jacob and Mike go over to the loser side where they can still finish as high as third but they are out of contention for the first or second place finish. Well, folks, if you're just joining us, my name is Keith Glenn, and this is Inside Foose's coverage of the 2024 Kentucky State Championships. I've had the pleasure of being joined by my good friend, Perry Palacio. Perry, thank you for joining me. Well, that's good. Good to be here. Uh, but after that very long match, I'm going to take a little break. And we're going to stay on YouTube and Twitch for a little while, so don't worry. Uh, at least a little while longer here as we approach the 11 o'clock hour here on the East Coast. But we'll be back after a little break as soon as we get another match call here on table number one.
And we welcome you back to Inside Foose's coverage of the 2024 Kentucky State Championships. Still going in open doubles in that same round we just saw on the winner's side for ninth or better. Um, we're going to have a good matchup here. It's going to be Sam Dijon and Cody Byrie against Billy Pappas and David Maring. And I have the pleasure of being joined by one of my favorite people to call matches with, the one and only current open women's open singles champion at TKO, Hannah Smith. Hannah, thank you for joining me. Wow, thanks. That's awesome. Great intro there. And women's doubles. Well, all the all the compliments. The most favorite person to call matches with. That yeah. was nice. You were like one of my first people that would ever get in the booth with me consistently. So I oh. appreciate having you up here. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's always a good time. So people don't have to listen to me just talk to myself. <laughs> and uh, congrats on your sixth straight yeah. women's doubles title. Yeah, thank you. It's a heck you. of a run. It has been. Um, yeah, it's really it's, it's so special to me every time. And this tournament is always like... I go into it thinking, you know, ah, it's kickoff. I haven't played. I've been hunting ducks. I hadn't touched the table since I was in Europe. And it's like, I'm just going to do the best I can. And I, I get so frustrated, you know, the first loss of the day or whatever <laughs> event. And then I'm like, okay, get my mind right. But it starts the year off. It makes you get, get back right. And it makes you have, you know, okay, I'm going to work on this for the next tournament. So I always like coming to this tournament. That's why I initially made this tournament a stop for me. And uh, I always use it that way you know because if not then i don't play and then i just practice a little bit here and there till vegas and then you go blow vegas and you're real mad so yeah. it's like <laughs> it's cool that i got to win yeah great but uh you almost tripled that just occurred to me. yeah by one point yeah. oh well maybe i'll get something else yeah, well most people don't even get the double so that's fair that's fair or win anything actually most people <laughs> don't win here <laughs> the majority yes. can't you know can't i mean because yeah. that's just like stats yeah statistically speaking statistically speaking yes um uh, speaking of which, your uh, open mix partner's looking pretty comfy over there in the bleachers. I was like, what the yeah, heck? Yeah, he's got to kick back. Yeah, taking up four rows of seats. But uh, we are going to have a good one. Oh, and I guessed right on the sides, too. Nice. Don't have to mess with the graphic there. Um, folks, if you're watching on YouTube, I can check in on your comments. We're not going to stare at them the whole time we're sitting here doing this, but feel free to say hi. We do love audience interaction around here. Always. If I can get my phone to work. It's funny, the internet was killing it here until the hotel started to pick up and uh, get busy. Yeah. It seemed really odd all weekend. Like, people are, like, just getting here, like, today, and I'm like, wow, man, I feel like I've been here for, like, five days. But really, I haven't. You know, I just got here Thursday, but it's like, man, you're just getting here today? Weird. I haven't yeah. seen you all weekend. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been an exciting weekend, not uh, at all times for the right reasons. <laughs> As uh, we had some excitement yesterday morning, got to hang out with the local fire department. Yeah, it was a fun time. Uh, it was actually like the room down from us. Oh, you were in that area too? Yeah, Bracken and Isabel played, or Bracken and Sully played firefighter in the morning. Like, we were laying in bed because we were like up, but Sully was in the bathroom, like, just got out of the shower, like, getting ready and whatever. So we were like, ah, oh, just wait. So I, like, snoozed my shower alarm. Yeah. Like, and um, so I'm just sitting there in bed, and then, like, my alarm goes off my phone, and I was like, ah, whatever. And then Sully, like, sticks her head out the door because she hears my alarm. And then, like, someone starts yelling, and they're like, yeah, do you need some help? And then Sully, like, goes to help. So I was like, ah. Somebody needs some help, but Sully helped him. Like, she's fully capable, <laughs> so that's cool. So I just kind of, like, sat back in bed, and then she comes back in and, like, opens the door up, and there's, like, smoke, like, coming in the door. And I was like, oh. We she's need like, to go. This isn't a drill. We need to get out, probably. <laughs> and then we're like, oh. Probably. So, and then this girl, she goes and, like, we start packing up things. I was like, get your laptops. That's, like, most important. And then she's like, yeah. And it's like, get my makeup. That's next. I was like, okay, <laughs> okay, got it. And so they have Priorities. their suitcases unpacked because they're, you know, they live like heathens and don't unpack their suitcases. And so they just nicely box their suitcases up, roll them out. Not me. Mine's, you know, unpacked in the drawer. Oh, I don't unpack so either. So all of my stuff is just, like, in the room. So I, I just grabbed my blender bottle and Sully's makeup and my backpack. And that was it. And then Sully s runs to the door, looks out, and goes, hey, can you come stand by the door so, you know, watch to see if the fire gets closed? Because i got to pack all my stuff. And I was like, <laughs> Sullivan, this is not like, I was like, are you, is this real life? Like, she's being dramatic in this moment. But then they went and, like, banged on all the doors and got everybody out. Yeah. And they, did, they did good, and they got to pull the fire alarm. I think that was a first for them. So yeah, they had um, a good time. They've been, you know, coughing up black stuff. <laughs> yeah, why not? For, for a day or two. 
as it looks like we are ready to get on <laughs> way here. Yeah, we don't normally have these kind of fun stories from tournaments. Usually something crazy happens, but I like that. Yeah. As we are set to get game number one underway here. Just a reminder, we are in the championship format. Wow, snappy wall. Oh, that's uh, his old school series that he used to run. To as Pappas has a chance to open scoring here. Tries to come down the middle, and Cody keeps it out. Pappas picks off that pass attempt. I haven't got to watch Billy play in a long time. He's not like well. commentating it. I've got to see it, you know, but I haven't really like locked in. Yeah. And Sam can't grab that one. Ends it back up with Cody. He's playing well, him and David. David, of course, reigning TKO Open Doubles champion. And uh, obviously got himself a very good partner here this year. Uh, but so do Sammy and Cody. That's a good team. Yeah, Sam has played really phenomenal this weekend. I, um, did you get to see that match against Ryan? I did, yeah, I did. I was like, oh. It was, yeah, that was a. It had me on the ropes for sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Ryan's so a nice, well. you know, fun guy to watch and good player, but I was, I, I think everybody was probably cheering for Sammy in that one. I mean, yeah, who wasn't? Yeah. Would have been a big W for him as he really not wasting any time poking that through the lane. And the Cody. Defense. Cody, master goalie, really. Absolutely. I've actually played with him uh, in open doubles at Colorado. And he, he actually played a bunch of forward as well, but you could really tell, like. That was a great pass. Oh, nice. little alley-oop as that finds yeah. its way into the goal, and that's how scoring gets underway here. Now one nothing for Cody and Sam. Little discussion. I think everything's good. Okay. Okay. Consult the time there in the bleachers. As Billy, he is doing his old school series. I've never seen him do it live. I haven't either, honestly. He, okay, Flippy. Yep. Percent Flippy. 1-1. One, one. It's kind of cool because, I mean, that, that series is essentially named after him. Literally. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And he stopped doing it. When I, when I met him two years ago or so at Florida State, he, I asked him about it, and he was like, yeah, this is how you do it, but honestly, you should switch to a brush. It's like, yeah. oh, cool. Like, like you said, I watched footage of it, like, back in the gap, but I haven't actually seen him, like, do it and, like, try in a tournament for, like, since I've been back. But, I mean, you know, clearly he still gets through the bracket somehow because he's Billy, but... Yeah. <laughs> David, nice job getting rid of it. And you wonder how much David gets to learn from the great players he gets to play with. I mean, he gets to play with Tony, he gets to play with Billy. You know, with that, I'm sure he's learning so much every tournament because they all have different ideas. Good nice pick up there. Pick up by Sammy. Yeah, I mean, just different perspectives on how the game yeah, is played. Yeah, sure. And they're each one strategy, you know, so. Good oh, perspective. Good D there from Sam. A runner? Yeah. Fires to the far side, and they have Sam and Cody have a 3 1 lead. I mean, asking this because I know you always call it that, but is the official name of that pass the Skippy? Because I've been calling it a Skippy <laughs> all weekend, and every time I say it, I'm like, that probably sounds silly. I was like, but that's what Hannah always called it. That one? <laughs> no, the Skippy, you know, the second yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, you got skipped. Yeah. Yeah, skipped on. Yeah, I think it's officially called the Skippy. I don't know what else I would really call it. It's one of those things, like, as long as we say it on air enough, it'll eventually become yeah, like the part of the, yeah, <laughs> the vocabulary. Yeah, exactly. I'm here to establish vocabulary. That's it. That's Steven with the turnover. Sammy. Nice shot. Uh, he shot a pole shot almost exclusively in that open I, singles match. I was just about to say that. It's, it's really cool to see Sam because, like, I've known him as a snake shooter in my life, but his pull shot is always so good, especially on his two bar. Woo, that was tight. Yes, it was. Um, so it's interesting to see, like, his reasoning behind choosing that for this shot, this matchup, you know, or how he's variated that between who he plays in open doubles. But Well, it's interesting. He sh opened shooting the snake, went sure. push side like three or four times, never tried to come pull. And then just switched to the pull shot and stuck with that and had great success with it. Um, so, you know, it's not like he was working all of his options on his rollover to see what was working. He just said, no, you know what? I'm going to blast this former world champion with my pull shot. Absolutely. There's Cody looking to bank here. And gets rid of it, but can't clear Billy's five. Sam. Oh, nice. He executed angle up there for Billy, and he goes quick to the first side. Just like that, it's a 4-3 ball game. It is cool to see Billy really clamp down. I was about to say, it is really just so fun. Like, I'm not even locked in on commentating because I'm just like enjoying watching foosball. Yeah. <laughs> 
You know, we want, we got to see him in handicap, but he was playing with Brandon, and they were kind of having fun with it. Sure. They ended up losing to a team, I think, going to expert points. Okay. But still, you know, at no point were they really, like, taking it serious, but Billy finding himself in some holes here in the matches we've seen him in open doubles and then just flipping that gear. It's fun to watch that. You know, those players get into crunch time, and they have to do something, and they get a little lax at the start, and they have to turn it up a little bit, and that's always a good time. You get to see some cool stuff there. Oh, nice, oh, nice pass from David. He does dial us up, and he can score occasionally. He's not a opposed to shooting, but usually he's just trying to feed his all-star forward. Oh. Wow, that one was a rocket. As that ball flies up off the table. So Cody putting the ball back into play now. Staring at the inside back. Goes the other way and gets the ball back. He has some really nifty options out of his bank too. They're a little bit, uh, a little different than the regular. It's 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 odd to play with him because it's like passing lanes that you're used, usually not around, I guess, until you've seen it once and you're like, oh, that's what we're doing here. But he's really got a cool plan with his bank shot series. Uh, Sammy now a chance to put away game number one. And Sammy fires far side. So some good fight on a Billy and Davin, but Sam and Cody close that one out. Yep. And I want to take this opportunity. I don't know anybody at home knows, but we have an academy in Jacksonville, Florida, and a couple of our newer guys are watching. Joseph, Colin, Shaley, good to see you guys are paying attention, watching some foosball. Always like to see the new players getting in, taking interest. So the, also the cool thing about going free on YouTube and Twitch, so the, some of the newer players that aren't as invested yet. Yeah, that's cool. That's awesome. That's Check it out. As it should be, you know. Pappas sticking with that Pappas series. And Sammy. A little slower that time. Usually it's pretty snappy, but. Sammy now. Or, excuse me, Cody. It's been a long day. Still looking to clear here. Fires that one up the table. So, as it often does in these matches. Steven, very ca capable. Of, oh, just missed that one, Billy. Makes the rod pay for it. <laughs> just missed that, missed that one, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he flexed pass, on that David. rod. Dang, yeah, Billy. <laughs> Sammy comes down the middle. It really comes down to how well David can handle the pressure against playing against a good team. We know he can do it. He won open. I think they double dipped open doubles nice last shot. year. Yeah, yeah. Billy responds. And he's one that's been in these pres pressure situations. You know, he might not be the forward that's having to do everything, but, you know, he's back there. He's holding his stuff out. He's been in these moments. He gets his blocks. He knows how to clear Ooh. a nice left hook. He can just dial up a big left hook whenever he wants, and they have a 2-1 lead. But, you know, getting to play in these moments builds a lot of character for you, you know, um, because you can have all the talent in the world, and if you get there and you crack under pressure, it really doesn't matter. So you know, he's doing a great job clearing the ball. And that's your job as a goalie. As Pappas goes back to the brush series and comes out in the middle quickly, and they have a 3-1 lead. Sammy's wall attempt is turned back his way. And able to dig that one out. Fires to the near side, and that cuts the lead in half now, 3-2. It's hard to believe I still look at, you know, I met Sam when he was like 13 years old. He's going to be 16 in a few months. I know. They grew up so quick. I know. <laughs> he was playing, he was standing on the step stools, and I haven't been around that long. Right. No, me too. I think the last time, well, not the last time, we played once, a few times before. But I remember playing him in like expert singles, and he had to have his box, and, <laughs> and I was like, dude, he's going to be so good. He's going to be, he's going to be so, so good. And then here he is, balling. And he took a year and a half, two-year break. And yeah. As Cody turns it over. Another flippy. Billy playing with house money there, trying to get cute. As David cannot dig that one out. What, are you laughing at something I said? No. Oh. <laughs> I was laughing at Billy. Uh. Oh. 
Nice. Oh, beautiful pass. That nice grab. Sick. Pappas now. Slowing things down a little bit here. Tries to come down the middle. Cody, nice job timing to rock there. I'm not sure if Cody and Sam have played a lot together, but I like the matchup. Like I like the, yeah, they're, like the team. They're a good team, and I think they, I want to say they played together somewhere. I think so, too. Like I've, I feel like that's a pretty familiar team. Nice little skippy. Yeah, there it is. I was about to say it. I feel like I saw them together. Uh, Cody played, I think he played World uh, Open Doubles at Worlds with Bryce Woldridge. Okay. Um, I don't remember who Sam played. I don't, Samuel might not have been in there. Might have been part of his broadcast. Oh, that was nice. As Sammy comes up with that loose ball. Fires that one to the far side, and just like that, we are all tied up, and a little bit of frustration there. Pappas with the stick series. Can't connect, so now Cody and Sam take possession. Oh, and David can't hang on to that rebound, so Sammy now a chance to take the lead. Tries to go far side, and David comes up with a block that it feels like they needed. Absolutely. And David calls timeout. Yeah, one thing, uh, it's like kind of random, but it, it, it's good for filler. Um, one thing me and Billy have kind of talked about all weekend is like, why do you win? Like, like, why do people win? Like, what's so good about their games that make them win? So, like, I don't know why that kind of like resonated with me, but it's like every time I've played somebody, and if like, or if I'm watching something, I'm like, why does that person win? Why did they just win that game? What is it? What's yeah. the factor? And it's like, you kind of have to do a deep dive into like, why do you win? Why do you lose? What's the problem? Or what's what, what it, what, what's the difference? And it's like crazy how you actually start thinking about that and you start looking at other players and kind of like realize like, oh, it's this. You know, it's their confidence in their in their defense or their shot or whatever. But you got to feel on this fact, this uh, two bar. As we're going to get a look at Pappas's two bar, he's got a good one. Usually a factor of why Billy wins. I mean, it's a good question though. I mean, because every, you know, there are a lot of players that win and they don't all do it the same as Pappas. Oh, turns it over out of the timeout. Definitely not an ideal situation for them. As Sammy now walks, regrips, comes near side, and Pappas gets the block. So no harm, no foul. You know, you got players like Brandon Munoz. Nothing but tons of ball skills. Go 100 miles an hour. Control the pace. Force their opponents to play up tempo. Right, Pappas right. has that one blocked up off the table. Then you have other guys like Brandon Moreland. 100% controlled, slow, slower pace, not as nearly as flashy, but still finds a way to win as Cody puts a good bank on goal, but Billy able to keep it out. So it's not, you know, will you play like this? There's there's something else there. Because there's a lot of different ways to win. But sure. A lot of... Oof. As Cody comes up with that one. And this is something you wonder, like, have they discussed this if David's in front and Billy's in goal here at this zone for the banks? I mean, they had it zoned out well there. Yeah, sure. Because Cody, I mean, he's good. Even if you have a plan and you have a zone, Cody can find a way. Like, that's why he is the goalie he is. Uh, um, Cody tries to. But when your opponents switch in this moment, I'm immediately thinking, you know, like, do they have a plan for this? Did yeah. they plan for me to get back in and run a bank series? And if they did, do something different. You know, you can always see. Sam now tries to go push side. This is an interesting setup because Billy and Dave only have one timeout left. And Billy going to play some good defense. So this could become a long ball here. Billy digs that one out. And Sam picks it off. And he calls timeout. He wants to think about it. So tight game here. Game number two. Two. 
called a lot of matches today. It's hard That's to keep fair. track of where we are. <laughs> so uh, when Ryan and Tommy were playing, they were they looked at us to, about the timeout situation. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> like, we're uh. in the fifth game. <laughs> like, you guys have called a ton of timeouts. As I don't know. I can tell you the score. Sam come, goes quick to the push side, and Billy was just camped out over there. So unable to connect out of the timeout. Billy gets rid of it, gets it back, and kicks that one around the table. So Byrie now again setting up for the bank series. Tries to go straight deep and almost stuffs it back into the goal. That would have been huge. Yeah. Five bar. Ooh. Tries a left hook and David, good defense. <laughs> what are they giggling about? I don't know. David just like clapped. <laughs> <laughs> He's excited. He's a nice block on that hook. Cody tries it again. Cody has a lot of cool, like, hitchy things that get you off of the hole that's there. Like, that's also cool, too. Like, like, normally, like, Banks, you know, it's like eh, 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 each side yeah. of the ball. He's got some cool little hitchy things that work pretty well. Sam pops that one up to the lane. Billy trying to talk him to the push side. Goes that there. way. Hits the wall. Oh, and Sam picks it up. David tried his best to jar it off his run. But Sam walks. Fires to that far side. He got him on the switch. And it is now 4-3 in favor of Sam and Cody. Looking to put away game number two as Billy gets back up front. Man, nice brush down there from Billy. Doesn't waste any time going on the middle, and it's now 4-4. Four, four. Billy gets the takeaway. Oh, he looked away. Why does he drop that pass? Surprised he didn't break the three bar. <laughs> it's okay. I can relate. I did the same thing. As David gets rid of it, so now it's on Cody. And Sammy can't grab it. Nice job keeping that out. It was headed for Pater right there. But Sammy able to grab it back and a chance to put away game number two. Tries to come near side. David gets the block. I think that hit chips. It's hard to see on this. I wasn't sure. Good what block there by David. If it bounces twice, that's out too, right? If it Look, I I'm still playing by the old rules. I haven't read the new ones yet. <laughs> no, I think that was the old rule. The only new rule with that that changed, I think, it is can that roll, now right? if it rolls, it's not out. Sure, sure. It used to be if it rolled, it was out. Oh, beautiful Ooh. pass. Man, Dang, up. saucy. Oh, snappy pass. Billy Pappas to take the game. He has a timeout. Fires near side. Wow. Yeah, that was not a big hole. A little celebratory pop, pop, pop from David. Yeah. It's fun watching him play. You can tell, like, he just enjoys foosball. Yeah, obviously. I mean, I mean I'm just happy that he's happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hey, he's a really nice guy. I've gotten to talk to him. Yeah, that's cool. I haven't got to talk to him much, but when I have, uh, he's, he's always super nice. It's cool to watch people have emotion when they play foosball and be, like, upset when they lose and, like, happy when they win. Yeah. It shows you like it. But, you know, on that, also, on another note, Sam has, like, he has he's changed so much. Like, you, I feel like you have to grow up so fast whenever you're, like, that good and you're playing at that level. You know, he came into the game, practiced so much, and he played with a lot of emotion when he was younger because who didn't? You know, we were all in the moments where it was, man, it really was, like, the end of the world when we lost. Yeah. But, like, he has done so, so well, like, controlling his emotions. Like, you barely see anything. My guy's, like, stone cold. Like, he could have uh. just won. He could have lost. I don't know. Sam's just, like, OG with it. But, yeah. you know, he does a really good job in staying composed in those moments. And I think that helps his game a lot more. You know, he's been in the pressure moments. He's been in the singles finals. He's done all the things. So. And that's hard to do because he's still, like, what? He's 15, yeah. I was like, 16? He's 15, still, you know yeah, what I mean? Gonna, he'll think be about 16 it. In, a, in a month That's or awesome. two. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, 
I think he's been playing on tour since he was like what seven or eight years old. Absolutely, I remember he had a, his box. Yeah, I mean, I re when I and I met him, it wasn't that long ago. He was on the yeah. step stools. Yeah. Then I saw him again like three months later. He had hit his growth spurt and he wasn't playing them on, <laughs> on him anymore. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I mean, even something like that would tri probably drastically change your game. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Playing at a different eye level. Absolutely. It's kind of this, like Sully talked about that too, like how it would affect her push when she grew up, you know, from being a little kid. So yeah. It's cool to see how they you grow up with foosball. Yeah, Sam now has a chance to open scoring here in game number three and fires down the middle. Billy back to work on the five here. Nice. Yeah, good deep brush down. Fires deep to the far side, and that ties things up at one apiece. And Pappas denies Dijon's first attempt, but his second one is true. And Dijon tries to come down the middle again, and that rebound ends up with his goalie. So Cody now. Oh, tries to pass and turns it over. And it doesn't end up costing him as that rebound ends up with David Maring. And you wonder how much, uh, you know, Billy and David went away from the table. He said something. I mean, clearly that's, you know, defensive based, you know, I assume. And you wonder what if what he tells him is something that's going to we're going to see clearly in this match or not. That's always a fun thing for me, like when I'm playing somebody and I'm, they go and they like go get advice from somebody. It's like I don't have to think with you anymore. I'm thinking with whoever you just got advice from. Like, you know what I mean? Like if yeah. I can think with them, I know what you're going to do. I know you're going to change something. So it's like oh, it's, it's cool to see that difference. Okay, with a pull kick. Yeah, then Paul uh, hung out on the top of Cody's rod for a second there before it rolled over to Billy. Oh, oh nice. Nice pass wow. in that great crab. Put some English on that one there. Dig it out. Tries to go far side, unable to get it, and Pappas grabs a rebound on his three. And, and you wonder if sh if Sam will switch back to the full shot to shoot all David. Yeah, if David keeps blocking him like this, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw it before the end of the match. Sure. Although, if I'm thinking back to last year when they pulled off that double dip, wasn't it against Kevin and Carlos? And I think he did a pretty good job blocking Kevin's pull. He might have an easier time with a pull shot. Hmm. Just something to think about, I guess. But probably hasn't seen much of one this weekend. I don't know. There's a lot of big pull shooters here as Pappas hammers that one to the near side, and it's now 3-1. You wonder how much, like, Billy thought that out. Like, did he, like, the last shot, did he see something on the setup and was like, next time I get the ball, I'm going to shoot this little setup. Like, I was, I was I'm always so like interested in picking their brains whenever they decide to quick shoot, but I'm even more whenever they like slowly mix in one quick shoot, like every you know four or three. It's like, were you just waiting on this setup? Did you have this idea and you checked twice? Nice pull shot by Cody Byer. Yes, up they did front. switch on the right. As Sam was having a hard time finding the range, and beautiful pull shot from Byrie, so that cuts the lead now three two. Cody has some swaggy stuff up there. I've, I've played goalie for him, and I've watched him play forward, and he's got some swaggy stuff. Like, you don't really expect it, but my guy probably has one of the best uh, push kicks oh, in, yeah. in this room. It's oh, yeah. bananas. And he's got a snappy five, too. He does. He does. As Pappas calls timeout with the ball. So, Cody going to switch up the rap game. The rap game. <laughs> 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 that was such a you lame joke. so swaggy. <laughs> I meant like the rap. I didn't mean. You're fixing to drop a mixtape yeah, with Cody Barry. Drop a beat here. <laughs> <laughs> the rap game. I did not mean it like that. I'm glad you caught that. <laughs> so Cody is re-wrapping the rods. Well said. Taking a little bit of a long time <laughs> out here. Well said. There. Is Billy still down there? Where did Billy go? He's over there hanging out with Trevor, his friend. Oh, yeah, he's sitting watching. <laughs> <laughs> he's watching the table. He's sitting down outside the pit. Yeah, watching what's You can going see him on. just behind David there in that player cam if David uh, gets out of the way. Well, oh, that's funny. While we're uh, here in this long timeout, as Billy rejoins us in the pit. Uh, all of our Academy guys are watching now. Oh, oh, hi, Academy. My buddy Derek's being a jerk. Oh. Yeah, that's how we tell each other that we love each other. 
one of those as we are back underway here as Pappas can't get the first attempt to go in. Cody with the pickup. So a chance to equalize. Tries to get another middle. David with a nice block. So David Mary. Oh, another nice pass. He's connected on that a few times. Tries to come down the middle, and Sam able to keep it out. Sam's got some pretty cool two-bar stuff, too. He does. If, uh, like, I don't know how cool he gets in games, but, like, in pickup games. Yeah, he can hit aerials, which are legal on IFP, I think, still. Not on ITS. Oh, great nice. hesitation wall pass. That's Byrie right now. Setting up for the pull shot. Tries to come down the middle, can't get it, but grabs the rebound. Oh, good tight straight there, and it's now 3-3. So Papa's going to have to figure out this new setup if he wants to hang in there. And runs that one up through the lane. Setting up way off center. Walks back to the middle. Goes deep to the far side, and it's now 4-3. So they're second? Did uh, Pappas and David call it? Right then, yeah. Yeah, so one they're out. Four, not sure. They called the first one. Okay. Billy had it on the five. Gotcha. What's your prediction in game counts here? At this rate, we're going five. We're going five. All right. And, I mean, even the games have been back and forth. Yeah. So... And we're tied at one apiece. If Pappas can, even if Cody and J Sam get this, Billy has an opportunity to pass and score, potentially take a 2-1 lead. Sam and Cody seem to be dialing it in a little bit. And it's such a snappy wall pass there. Fires down the nice. middle. And it is 4-4. Four, four. Pappas will have the first shot at it. The crowd is drawing. And nice. Billy connects on the brush up. Billy Pappas for the game. Oh, and he loses the handle. A lot of timeouts. Oh, and he can't connect. Sam, Cody just got enough of it that Sam ends up with the ball. And they call their timeout. Sounds like they're going to switch. I don't know. It's, I've seen so many people lose a ball like that this weekend. Yeah, it seems to be happening a lot. Like, the players that never do it. Quick taps is like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. As, um, these competitors have drawn a crowd here in the pit. Full bleachers watching these two great teams go at it. And we are going to get that switch. It'll be Cody looking to clear here. Makes you wonder if they're going to call their second if Sam can get it. Or does he shoot his pull shot? Shoot it. Cody's going to make it, though. Oh, whiffs on the first attempt. Has to get rid of it. Whiffs mm. his handles. Mm. And turns it over. And Billy rolls it right into a flippy. Have you seen people do poolside flippies or no? It's it. Uh, can you do it? Absolutely. I've because I've tried it. Todd was like, "You can't do a poolside flippy," and I was like, "Oh, I can." And I went home and practiced it, and I came back and shot it and designated. And he was like, "You know, what is that?" Okay. Well, Put next time away. I next it's time, like really hard to do it. Sometimes I like whiff the whole ball, but next time you're on the other side of this table, I, I expect to see a poolside flippy. I might when I warm up or something. Yeah. <laughs> or like uh, when you're playing designated. <laughs> you bust that out on do. somebody? Yeah, that'll get <laughs> somebody get way fired. off guard. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have Todd this weekend. He won't allow it. Like, Who are you playing to designate it with? Uh, Brandon Moreland. Oh, nice. Yeah. Man, you get the best partners. Yeah. They're cool people. <laughs> As, uh, so, David and Billy, nice response here. Winning a couple close games to take a 2-1 lead on the way to the fourth game. 
But it does look like Sammy and Cody are going to... I'm trying not to call him Sammy now that he's not a little kid anymore. Samuel. <laughs> Sam <laughs> he's, he's full grown yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as Cody can't connect on his first pass attempt. But it does look like they're going to stick with this. Uh, Sammy just gets rid of it. Puts the pressure back on Dave in the clear. Oh, mm. well, a lot of table thumping. Yeah. And loose ball fought for and picked up by Billy Pappas. Going with the brush series. Get down there. Pappas tries to come down the middle, and Sam able to deny him, so Cody. Nice. Oh, off the wall, back to the wall? Yeah. Or it's just one, a slow it's wall? one of my faves. Off the wall, back. Uh, it's a very lethal pass. Nobody does it better than Tony Sprademan, but I've seen a lot more players putting it to use this weekend. Yeah, that used to be my favorite Tony pass, but he does another one now. That's my new favorite. What's he doing now? It's kind of like a skippy, but it's really just like a real deep brush with just with your middle guy, and you go catch it with a second man. Oh, dang. It's sick. Nice. We practiced it at Worlds. It was fun. Nice. That's bad. This open scoring here in game four. And loose ball ends up with Sam. You know, with the options David has, he, he usually stays in – in, within his options, and I know that helps Billy a lot with, you know, backing him up with his five, with his three, like knowing where to be in the general area. Um, that was odd. The ball just kind of rolled back yeah. between them there. Well, wasn't moving that fast. Right. But that does seem to help, you know, as a forward, being able to back up your goalie and all that. And we had a few discussions with crazy signals and things that you could do with your partner to, to know exactly what your goalie was going to shoot right before they had to shoot it. No. So as a forward, you could always be lined up in right, position. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, in position. As we have another switch here, that's Sam back up front after Billy scored two on Sam. Nice runner. And there it is. Sam DeJohn sets up for the pull shot. Tries to get on the middle. Devin able to deny him. Hammers that long. That was loud. That was. It was a great shot. So that cuts the lead to 2 1. Pappas. Sam gets a big chunk of that, but Pappas gets it back. And he calls timeout. It's interesting how he uses his timeouts. It is, especially in a situation like this where they may have to do some defensive switching. When you're up, yeah. up, to, up a point and up a game. Must be something in the tall, or he was looking for something, or, you know, like moving the ball that slow. You're looking for you know, probably isolating one man, trying to wait till he goes the other way, and then you're trying to do something. But he was good defense, but it's interesting to see, like, why, like what he was thinking in that moment. And, you know, he could have just been like, ah, I feel like a timeout. It's Billy. Huh. Okay, no. <laughs> now the age roll rule, if you think about taking a timeout, call it. Skippy. Mm, Skippy. <laughs> Love to see it. Isn't that a brand of peanut butter? Yes. <laughs> That's Cody. <laughs> I'm singing Jif Jiffy. That's I think they both are. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, nice job grabbing that rebound after Cody gets the block. Sam slowing things down. Nice. And he is hammering that long. Just a little bit of a spray, quick, snappy. It's a heck of a pull shot. There's Pappas. Can't connect there. And Cody Byrie. Wow. Beautiful pass. And the Jean, again, that split it looked like three-quarter. Uh, the, the one before that looked the same as that one, so I would say, yeah. Okay. Not like a square long, but a spray long. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, Sam continues to play good defense on Billy's five. 
And Billy changed up the five, too, from the mistake the earlier. Yeah. Let's see if he goes back to it now that he's had a hard time a couple times there. And not a turnover. Almost, but not quite. And Sam. Oh, can't hang out on that pass. Sam Dijon setting up for the pull shot, trying to take a 4-2 lead. Tries the flippy. Don't see a lot of the pull shot set up too often. I, I, I wasn't even sure what I saw there for a minute. Uh, Sam Dijon fires down the middle. Tucked. Nice. So the pull shot seems to be the answer for the young man as he now has a 4-2 lead and we very well will be heading to the fifth. Pappas going to have something to say about it first, though. Tries to come quick to the near side and Kabayri there to deny him. Tries the inside bank. Pappas gets enough of it. Oh, and Steven rushed into that pass. Turns it over. Yeah, but he gets the block. block. We're going to buckle down after making the mistake. Good resolve there from David Manning. It's interesting. We see him shoot more, I feel like, when he plays with Tony. He's been all clear and pass as he turns that one over. Yeah, I mean. I've seen him score. Yeah. The only other player I've seen him play with, I think, is Tony. Yeah. I think he played with Brandon maybe in one. I'm he did, sure. I think he did play one, but I don't think I was there for that one. Uh, I don't remember watching many matches either of that. Tournament. And wow. Dijon fires that one down the middle, and we are heading to a fifth and final game. I think we're going to get some more overtime. Sure. Be cool. We've already had two Heck today. Yeah, why not? We've got some good matches here on one. As Cody and Sam talk it over. There's Billy and David just kind of hanging out. Their game plan a little more clear. It's just Billy's got to take over here. Yep, just go do Billy things. It's so hard to play perfect foosball, too. You know, like pass and score, pass and score. You know, I get home, you practice, and it's like, man, if I can do five in a row, I'm going to win. If I can pass and shoot, I'm going to win. But it's so hard to do that under pressure, especially when you have really, really great players you know, defending you as well because the team, you know, both of these teams are great defensively as well as offensively. So just threats all the way around. Uh, that's Billy. It's like a chip. Yeah, uh, we, we did see him doing that in the handicap doubles. Nice. Not so much today, but. Fiery. Oh, oh nice, nice pickup pick by Sam Dijon, spiking that one home. They get out to an early one nothing lead. Uh, there's Billy taking his time. Sam all over it. He got Cody with that fake earlier. Right. Sam got a good look at it. And Sam able to work that one through and grab it. Sets up for the pull shot. Tries to come along, stubs it, and calls timeout. Haven't seen him shoot a straight, I don't think, even when he was playing against Ryan. Yeah. It was all middle and long. Yep. And about, you know, Sam, Sam does a really good job getting the lead. So, you know, with this 1-0 lead, bury this one, your 2-0, really have to keep that, and, and that's where the focus has to shift to. Um, you know, even it's hard because it's like, oh, you got to defend right now, but you really just have to think, like, when I have the ball, I have to pass and score. I have to put this ball away. And, um, I, you know, I think he has the capability of doing that, just lock it in, focus a little bit more, and – and that match could go a little bit differently uh, with the Ryan, you know, because he, he had the possessions and just about keeping that lead, and it's easier said than done, but. Yeah, Blake was in here calling with me. He said if this gets to overtime, it's Ryan's game. Yeah, for sure. And he ended up clamping down and winning. And it's David looking to clear here. Throws a pass, gets it back. Wow. And 
they're good. It's the same pass. It's the one he keeps connecting on. Sure. It's hitting it in different places, too. And it's a little bit harder to defend. You know, it's like, he keeps doing the same thing. Why can't you block it? But, you know, the different timings, different tosses, you know, how much he's spraying it down. The launch point, yeah. Exactly. It's good notes if you're a new player at home. Watching. Yep, something you could probably get away with a lot, and it's pretty hard to defend. Yes. <laughs> As Billy nice, hammers that one, pull side doubles down. And it's 1 1. Let's get some overtime here. And Sammy off the wall, back to the wall. We'll just more of the traditional brush, though. There's nice. the straight. There's the wondering. one you were talking about. Wondering when that was going to show up. <laughs> Got to save it. Like Fustradamus up here. Yeah. As <laughs> Billy can't connect there, so Cody will take over. Oh, almost another turnover, but Cody lucky to get that one back. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. That was 100% on purpose. I've done <laughs> stuff like that by accident before as Pappas <laughs> fires it to the near side, and that ties things up now 2 2. That was a deep, hard chip up. You got to love the big, hard dive to the wall. That's fun. Uh, Sam looking to regain the lead here. Tries to go long, can't get it. Sam gets the man on it three times, but it ends up with David twice. So loose ball, ends up with Cody. Goalie straight in possessions here. Nice. Oh, nice sit wow. still slider. Great option out of that setup. Absolutely. As Cody and Sam now have a 3 2 lead. See if Billy can respond. Sam gets the steal. Chance to open up the lead here. They have a conversation. What was the um, stoppage there? That was weird. Yeah, Sam Dijon looking to make it a 4-2 ball game. It was long again, and David able to jump out there and get it. And again, oh, wow. the four-wheel drive, and it is now match ball here in the fifth game for Sam Dijon and Cody Byrie. Does Billy Pappas have a response? He does so far. That's Pappas now. Loading up to come pull side. Down the middle. Nice. And we are one ball away from overtime. I don't want to cheer against Sam and Cody, but I really want overtime. And they're going to switch. Interesting switch there. Sam has been cooking. And our, their last goal, or second to last goal, Cody scored. Oh, oh wow. man. Well, they got the takeaway they needed. They have possession. They still have a timeout. Oh, the ball kicks around and ends up with Sam. Sam Bajan tries, and Pappas grabs the possession. Almost had it on his three. Oh, and tries to run it up, but he goes too high. Byrie able to dig it out. Cody Byrie with possession and a chance to put away the match. Yes. Wow. Fires it straight. And in five hard fought games, just barely avoiding overtime, Sam Dijon and Cody Byrie have defeated Billy Pappas and David Maring to send them over to the loser's bracket. Reminder, we are in the championship format, so there is no shot at first or second once you end up in the losers. But not a problem for Sam and Cody as David and Billy will 
fight for third. Yeah, that was fun to watch. I need to go back and watch more Billy Foosball. I've seen the chip thing a little bit. I've seen the, the old school stick stuff, but I need to go back and watch more of his five. Absolutely. I feel like I can learn something. <laughs> Well, folks, if you're just joining us, this is Inside Foose's coverage of the 2024 Kentucky State Championships. Move through the open doubles bracket here. Big thanks to my friend, Hannah Smith, for coming to keep me company. Always. I don't know what's going to be next or how long it's going to be, but you got another one in you? Or? Uh, yeah, I think I should have another break. I'll check the brackets, but if I'm, okay. if I'm available, I'll definitely hang out. Well, I appreciate that. Of course. Spent a lot of time hanging up here and talking to myself. so. That's fun. That's healthy. <laughs> Losing my mind, yeah. <laughs> So a couple great matches so far here today. A lot of fifth games, a lot of over, a couple overtimes. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, okay. So why did they win? Why do you win? If Billy asks you that question and you're Sam and you're Cody, what's your answer right then? I mean, there were a lot of factors in that one. They switched effectively. They kept the pressure on David, which is key when okay. you're playing against a player like Billy. Sure. They executed, limit, limited their mistakes. You know, that could be huge sometimes, too. Just not yeah. necessarily doing anything fancy, just not yeah. making mistakes. Right, and that's kind of one thing that he said, too, is like, you know, you just eliminate the dumb stuff. Yeah. Like, just don't do dumb stuff. That can be the reason why you won. You know, it's like I lost a match earlier today, and the guy didn't do anything special. It was like basic yeah. stuff. But he executed. Yeah. He did the simple things. And it was like he did the simple things, and he did them well. Okay. You know, it didn't play out of his, you know, out of his zone, out of his range, you know, it was like he knows what he's capable of, and that's what he does, and that's why he won. Yeah, if you start trying to, you know, play outside of yourself. You yeah, know, and you see that. You oh see yeah. that a lot. I've seen, you know, plenty of times, like, oh, I've never connected on this in practice, but now that I'm in a competitive match, I'll give it a shot. Or like a really hard shot or something like completely wacko, and it's like a crunch time ball. It's like, bro, what? Yeah. We, you were doing great with what we, were <laughs> yeah. what we had going. Why did you switch it up? You see that so much, though, and it's like, People overthink it. I had that yeah. conversation with uh, our local promoter, who's also one of our better players, high expert, low pro uh, player, Chris Carson. He, just, you know, there we were playing, and, and I try to dictate if I have the ball, and he, you know, I forget what it was, but basically he was just like did something completely that I didn't expect defensively. Yeah. And he's like, sometimes you can just have to dumb it down. You do. You know, you you start overthinking. I mean, sometimes you have to do that where it's the I know that you know that you know that I know type of thing back and forth. But sometimes you just, the yeah. other guy's just not thinking about it. Right. And it depends a lot on who I'm playing that I have to think in layers with like that. You know, several players make me think and it's like onion. Like, I know that he knows I'm good at this, but I know that. So it's like <laughs> one more. And like, you know, we go back and forth because it's like years packed into this match because like this guy knows me from since I was, you know, five, like 12, literally. He's seen me play baseball my entire career. And it's crazy because sometimes you get so wrapped in that that your partner's like, bro, set the ball up and hit it straight. Quit. <laughs> like, just stop. Like, and, you know, you get so wrapped up in it. So it is cool sometimes to be like, just simplify it. That's it. Yeah. That's how I had a basketball coach when I was in eighth grade. I was a starting center, if you can believe that. Okay. I was this tall in eighth grade. So, so you can ball? Yeah. Oh, I used to be able to. I had to learn how to dribble <laughs> when I got to high school. Oh. But, uh. I had to switch to playing guard. But, no, I had a coach, and he always told me he would say, kiss, keep it simple, stupid. Yep. Like, don't overthink it. Just stick to the basics. And, and in those crunch moments, you know, I, I'll use Brandon Moreland because I think, you know, I've watched a little bit of his foosball through my life. He has his options, and they're not like – I mean, granted, he can do, like, you know, set up as a pull shot, bottom wall sling, or like crazy things. He can do all the wacko stuff that's cool, but you know, he is very good at being structured, at having, you know, four options. If they're there and there, then this is open. Or, you know, he's very, very good at that. So, you know, if I was a player just getting into foosball and I needed to craft a series and I had a I had a pull shot, go watch Brandon Moreland. You know, he has he's so good with his options and you see the zones and the timing that it works on and and that was one that I told, you know, Breck. Breck's got a great pull shot. He can hit a pull shot better than I can. And I was like, you need to go watch him because that that can be a series for you. And it's like picking up on things like that, that someone that does it so – executes so well and knows how to read things. And it's like literally only does four things. Okay, great. But he scored six points this match. So it's, yeah, like, <laughs> it's exactly. like, wow, great. <laughs> I have seen Breck's pull shot. He does have a good one from yeah, the two bar, yeah. That's great. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I've ever really seen him shoot it up front, but – 
He's got a good one. And that's the thing, you know, just because you can hit it. And we, and you actually, I had I, we was talking about a conversation we had recently, the gatekeeper thing. Yes. That is becoming more and more obvious to me, like who is a gatekeeper who's not playing in locals. Absolutely. I've been having a little bit better success. And it's just people that don't think about it, but they'll have success because you're sitting there thinking, 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 thinking six layers deep and they they never got past that first one exactly <laughs> it's exactly. like well you landed on an even number and they're still sitting at one <laughs> and they just do their thing that they do without thinking about it it's just how they play and it can be effective as uh put in your results sam It's also up on the wall over there on the projector. They could just point at the camera and be like, hey. Yeah, they it. could. They, got it. But they could do that. Kristen or Candy, whoever asked about that, would have to know to look. I think they got it. Which that means. <laughs> That's why we haven't got another match call, because these guys are just hanging oh, around not putting the results boys. in. That'll give us a chance to talk. Sure. Give new players good advice, since I know there's at least a handful of them hanging out watching. Yeah. Yep, that, yep. I, that does make me a little – I don't think any of them have ever really watched before. Oh, I made wow. A, I made a point of messaging. Okay. like, hey, we're free on YouTube. That's sick. Yeah, some of them are just very much new getting into it, and some of them have been around for a little while, but – yeah, the Academy thing is so cool to me. I really hate that there's not something like that where we, where we are, and – uh you know, it's been so long since we had a new player get in the game. Well, that's what we <laughs> – so I – for the first time ever, the two guys that started the academy, the two guys that got me into the sport, we all came to a tournament at the same time. Oh, nice. I've been with either of them, but not all three of us at the same time. And we all drove up together and we talked about it. We had a nice 11-hour ride to kill. And we talked about – I mean, we had to kick people out of our group checks. Apparently, some people's phones can't handle more than 20 people. <laughs> Like okay. we have, and you know, some people are just social. They show up on Thursday night, they knock sure. the ball around, they have some beers, hang out with their friends. But some of them are getting really, really into it. And you know, I know most scenes, like you said, would kill just to get a new player. Absolutely. And uh, it's really been successful, and coming up on five years of it now. And, That's uh, awesome. But I will say, we did have also have the conversation about how we got lucky as heck with our situation, where we were able to do that. Not just them being willing to donate their time. And, like, for the first six months, they just sat around at the bar by themselves, knocking the ball around, hoping yeah. to get somebody before it actually caught traction. But they stayed dedicated, and now it's turned into what it is with this big group. But our local promoter had a table, a uh, buddy from high school who owned a bar, so that's where we had our table. Okay. Now he bought into the bar that that guy opened next door, so we have a foosball home. Okay. And we can just put the tables on free play. And, you know, it is. I mean, we all go there and socialize Friday, Saturday night. Yeah. Very convenient that it's a three-minute walk from my house. So I love it. But, yeah. um, you know, just having that opportunity where we, we know we have a space that we can go into and play. Um, not everybody has that. You know, some scenes struggle to find a place where they can even keep tables for their locals. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, you know. I'm always so, like, jealous of, like, all the cool places that have, like, really cool scenes and locals because I'm like, I would get so much better if I had the scene to go practice like that. But it's, like, I don't know. It, it's so different, and it, it's just awesome that you have that place so you can have other people getting into this game because that's what we need because, I mean, no offense, but they're not getting into foosball because of tour stops. Oh, no. They're getting into foosball because of locals. Yes. <laughs> so it's, like, that's really where you need to focus if you want your tour stops to just get bigger and better every year. Uh, that other thing we got lucky with that bar I mean it's not like it's oh it's just a bar it's on a bar on like one of the major like nightlife drags in Jacksonville okay so we get tons of foot traffic and there are other games there people go to play and then they see us playing foosball and I'm like oh shoot that's cool yeah um, so we, we that gives us exposure when we used to play our locals in like this smoky pool hall on the second floor like tucked back behind the dartboards nobody ever walked by yeah. and saw us playing um, but now we have a ton of exposure and like I said we have a home so it's That's awesome. We got lucky, and we had guys dedicated to put the time in. But, you know, not everybody can do that. It's not just like, oh, here's the formula. Go do it. Oh, yeah, There's sure. There's a lot of pieces to it that have really worked out for us. So. Yeah. I wish I could be, like, a foosball coach. Yeah. Like, you know, like, you could I be. wish they could do a thing. Like, you come to a tournament and, like, you get you to could play. You could do a, a, player, uh, like a new player clinic. Yeah, or something you fun like that. that. When I used to play Ultimate, we had the local league. They would have, like, oh, for the players that kind of know what they're – and there would always be people that playing in the – oh, I know what I'm doing, playing in the pickup game. So you should go over to the new player clinic. 
but um, they would do you know put take people aside to teach them the basics. I think that would be so cool. The first week, just to get everybody's feet wet. Yeah. And you know now everyone's saying like, oh, you got to get knocked out a beginner after one tournament or one year. I'm like, how many players do we know that have been? They we see them all the time and they're still playing beginner. Sure. Because, you know, they just. I don't want to sound mean. They're deserving. <laughs> of the lowest rank in foosball. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you need to be pushed out of that rank too quickly. That's what pushes yeah. people to quit. Yeah, and if, if not they're not dominating beginner or any other events higher than that, if they're not, like, really cranking it out there, I have no problem with players remaining beginner because beginner is a rank for that. It's you not know? technically a rank. They, it's not technically but. a rank, whatever. But, like, you know, when Bracklin got into foosball, it was a big deal for beginners because, you know, he had literally never even seen a foosball table, like, seriously, for, like, three months. And then he went to one tournament, watched it, and then he came back. So it's like he was literally a beginner. And he came here and he got to play people who had been playing for like 30 years. So that was just really different for him. But um, And it was you know, it was kind of like degrading. You know, you come up here, you do your best, you put your work in, you're a true beginner. And you come up here and you play somebody who's been playing for years and years and he just cranks on you. It's not very fun. You don't really want to come back to the next one. Uh, and IFP <laughs> has that rule where it's if you make a final – in beginner, whether you lose it or not, I got double dipped by the McGregor brothers in mine. Yeah, and you get bummed out. Well, yeah, and like I think the guy he lost to in his first ever beginner singles final was up three in the winners bracket of pro singles oh, at yeah. the same time, and he was like, "This isn't fair. This isn't. This isn't." But that right. that guy got knocked. <laughs> whoever that player was got knocked out uh, after Brack had to lose the final to the gatekeeper. Yeah. Keyword gatekeeper. There's not too many gatekeepers running around a beginner. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a cool rank. It's a cool thing. I wish I could um, be more helpful to those that are interested in help. But, um, oh. you know, I say that, but I have, my own, uh, I have my own issues. I have my own coach. You know, it's like, okay, well. Someone made that comment to us earlier. It was like, you know, you guys have coaches. You have this. You have that. But that's a weird, weird thing to think about, really. So, on table one, we will have Spencer Wynock and Josh Sarpy against Isabel and Brandon Munoz. And I'll actually play the winner. So, that's fun. Nice. <laughs> Who are you playing with? Uh, Russell. Oh, Achana? Yep. Nice. Um, very good player. My dog. Your girl Sullivan put him in the losers and pro singles. I think yeah. I called that one. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. yeah, we were actually, all three of us were kind of discussing that match earlier. Pretty cool, though. Is there a, sorry, I'm going to talk to our super producer, Ashley, real quick. Is there a way to put that? I don't. I can't find that on the thing. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so you get to scout the winner. Was that here? Yeah. <laughs> do you guys ever do that to me while I'm up here zoning out? <laughs> yes. Have you really? No, I don't oh. have any. I don't have any of you. But have there ever been any? None of you. Uh huh. My boy zoomed in. You guys are the mean girl click. No, we're not. You we absolutely do this to are. each other. <laughs> now I'm gonna be all paranoid up here, like making sure I don't. Ninety-nine percent of the time, it's of each other. It's don't fine. do anything embarrassing. I, I like being off camera back here. That's the whole point. What? I can just hang out and nobody's. You uh, don't want the green screen and like. Well, Adam puts a lot more thought into his presentation than I do. That's fair. I have a lot of throw a hoodie and a hat on, and I'm good to go. <laughs> Got to hang out with the local news crew though earlier. That was fun. I thought I saw a guy in a suit down here. That guy actually is a local uh, UK student. No way. Okay. That was doing a little document. So it was actually, but there was a news crew from Channel 18 or whatever here. They had their camera That's set cool. up behind me and Shannon when we did the uh, open singles final. Nifty. Okay. Do you know who got your girl over here and Brandon? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Almost, almost called him what we call him here. Yeah. But, you um, guys are the mean girl no, click. It was, no, it wasn't. Um, Tony Gashi. Okay, the Canadians. And Alfred Lowe. Okay. Alfred Lowe, fun fact, um, played with me in 
back in the gap about 2016 probably and we teamed up at a tournament because you know we found it we met each other we were sitting there watching some random match and we started talking defense and we were both like wow yeah that's a good idea it's a good idea and, and then like randomly i needed a partner for expert doubles so i was like hey man you want to play expert doubles at worlds and he was like yeah so play together lost first round it's like 190 teams or whatever and then we come all the way back to third Dang. And then Tommy Yor beats us for third. That's the long run. And we did so well, and it was just so much fun. And I actually haven't seen him at a tournament since. So I'm like, I was super geeked. He came what in year was day, that? Like 2016. Okay. So yeah, he's ago. from Canada. And he came in. I was like, oh, my gosh. You know, it's so cool to see see things like that. So Alfred Lowe, Tony Gashi, great team. Cool. So what do you call him? <laughs> that not appropriate for the eight. Well, actually, I had I had it wrong. <laughs> I forgot it. He was playing with Alfred Law. I thought he was playing with someone else. So, I, actually, I don't have a nickname for Alfred or Tony. You're making me nervous now. Uh, those are my people. I can't really – I don't have anything funny to say about them. Yeah. Except for I was super intimidated by Tony Gashi the first, like, tournament. He's gotten intense. What's that? Yeah. But I like to face my fears. So, I had to go and, like, talk to him the first tournament. I was like, hey, I'm intimidated, but I'm coming to yeah. get over this. And he was like, hey, I'm the nicest person in the world. Nice to meet you. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, it seems Just like kidding. Nice I'm good guy. now. I haven't really interacted. No, he's him, great. He's great. Um, Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Can anybody hear us? Oh, that's this is table three. Just assume they can. Yeah, always assume. <laughs> you, treat, you treat mics in the booth like a loaded gun. Just assume it's hot. That's right. Like Man. that camo hat. Yeah. Man. Oh, I <laughs> <laughs> I told that story the other day about how I, <laughs> I muted your mic and then leaned in with my microphone attached to my head, not thinking about it. Ding dong. That was a TKO last year, wasn't it? Uh, I thought it was at Nationals. It could have been Nationals, and then we interacted again at TKO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it, I'm like pretty sure it was Nationals. We come to this hotel so much. <laughs> I live here. Seventh time in the last two and a half years I've been at this hotel. As it looks like we are ready to get underway. So, folks, you, uh, I'm pretty sure you guys can still hear us, but we are uh, underway here as that's uh, Spencer Why Not. I'm going to just call him Why Not. That's a cool name. Yeah, why not? As, uh-oh. Okay. As Bell reels the ball in. We're having to go a little old school here. Awesome, we're back. As Brandon Munoz. So has he given up on that? He was doing the Billy Pappas stick series last time I saw him play, and now he's back to his old uh, kind of brush Brandon? series. Yeah. I don't know. I saw him doing like a super cool top wall. Like yeah. <laughs> so I was about to say a really cool like far wall series. It was pretty fun. So I don't know. I like that. It's different. It's, you know, he's he's good at it, of course. He's good at whatever he wants to do. So it's like it's cool to see him working through different things and – it was pretty effective, the match I saw. Spencer able to get that one along the wall. And Brandon now having a little fun with it. Runs that up to the wall. Or the lane. Hammers that one to your side, and we're tied up at one apiece. Lindsay, the hotel has only caught fire one time. And it technically didn't even catch fire. It was no This no tournament is fire. Yes. We've already started cooking up a lot of cool captions for this tournament. <laughs> yeah. LOL. Lame uh, pun. We're too lame. It's fine. Oh, beautiful pass from Isabel. The barrel along the near wall, and he can't convert. Josh comes up with that one. Yeah, did you hear it wasn't actually a fire? It was just like the thing melted down and kicked out like a ton of smoke. It was definitely smoking. That's yeah. for sure. They didn't actually have a fire to put out. Oh, nice little... Juggle to the pass, and Brandon gets him with a changeup. Yeah, I just saw, I noticed he started doing this fun little shot that we need to come up with a name for. Unless what is you guys it? Already have Which that, one is it? The, the setup in the, in the middle? middle? Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a cool name for it yet. Oh, another nice pass, but Brandon can't hang on to it. Oh, and Josh Sarpy dials up a nice pass of his own. But a little too hot for Spencer, and that comes to rest. So Spencer Wynock 
tries to go off the back wall, and it ends up with Brandon Lindis' three bar. Hammers that one on the far side, now 2-1. Oh, and a costly turnover as Brandon converts immediately. Not terrible defense there. Josh had his back man in the right spot. You know, Brandon uh, is close by it, but, you know, doing Brandon things. Oh, veteran move there. Mm -hmm. You technically have to go over the top of that. Technically have to what? Go over the top of that ball. You can't just push it directly out of your zone. You have to come over the top. Oh, I didn't know that. I think so. Is that the rules? I think that's a rule. Okay. Well, Brandon talked to him anyway. Either way, he comes to the pole side on that one. It's now 4-1. I didn't know. I mean, normally people do come from the top. So I guess it's never really come up. I'm I didn't like know pretty, it was a rule, though. I'm pretty though. sure, but I might be wrong. I don't know. I just know that, like, several people have made me, like, like checking in between, like, balls and stuff. You can't just, like, push it out of your area. Well, I guess it makes sense, like, <laughs> if you think about it. If you're it's having like a hard time clearing, time. yeah, you could just running out of time. Just push it out. Yeah. So you have to go over the top. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Don't, no, that, don't that, quote me on this. Like that would make anything. sense. And Isabel with a turnover. But yeah, no, that would make sense. Okay. Farwell sling. Love to see that. Taking it out here. I was like, oh, I was pin. thinking, like, are we going to see a backfit out of this? Nice I, shot. I like Gosh. that shot, too. Me, too. It's, I mean, it's an option you can get once a game. Yeah. But. Nice. Good deep runner. Josh has really been playing great foosball. Oh, I've I didn't realize they switched. Th yeah, I've, I've been watching him, uh, you know, randomly through the tournaments, and every time I see him, he does something cool. Yeah. And he, he's getting, you know, he, and he executes it well. So he's having a really good weekend from what I've seen. As Brandon spikes that one back into the goal to take game number one. Oh, they're not switching. Brandon's just re-wrapping. Okay. What you thinking about there? Deep just watching. Just watching. Josh ready to kick game number two underway here. This is two out of three, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> whoa, 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 <laughs> Look at Maybe he didn't hear him say ready or something. Oh, okay. I don't know. <laughs> Just giggles about it. It's fine. Yeah, as Josh can't connect on that pass, so Isabel now. Look at it clear. And Spencer able to get rid of it. Isabel can't clear Josh's five. Bluff and a brush before he turns it over. Nice. Tries to rip it into a pole kick. Can't get it. Tries it again. <laughs> Just, oh, nice. How about a left hook? I have noticed Brandon is playing a more, even though he's still doing some of the fun kind of silly stuff, he is definitely playing a more control game than he used to. Yeah, of course. You know, he first came over here and he was – Fast rolling around, bang, bang, bang. But then, you know, he's a smart player. He, he figured out he had to kind of, you know, finesse those things and stop, you know, just free willing like he wants. And he just, and he and he's good at it. He's one of those that can play fast, he can play slow, he can execute it, you know, at whatever pace, you know, the speed of light or, you know, like normal human speed. Nice back pin Another once again. One. Love to see it. And the sixth. It uh, amazes me that. <laughs> the sixth five bar shot we've seen. Yeah. Uh, uh, because you can really, it's hard to come near side with a back pen. At least for me, as Josh fires that one near side, and they have their first lead of the match. It's not 2 1. Or yeah, it's, it's difficult. I can't really shoot a back pen. I've never really practiced it, but it is fun to watch people who are good at it finesse them. So It feels like throwing a baseball when you do it, because you're, you know what I mean? Or no, throwing I mean, a punch kind of thing. Like Interesting. It's literally just move your arm out there and then come forward with it. Well, I've never thrown a punch, so I wouldn't know. You've never thrown a punch your whole life? You're lying? <laughs> Maybe. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Brandon hammers that one near side or far side. Now 2-2. Two, two. Josh working the whole table. 
Oh, and there is a new rule about that, right? You get a wall reset if you pull it from one wall to the other. Like I said, I'm yeah, not really yeah. well versed in the new rules yet. I've been duck hunting. Hit me up at Vegas. I'll have I'll have understanding the of the rule. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw the Facebook post, but I didn't read it. As uh, we got another switch here, so that's Spencer back up front. Nice lane. Tries to euro it to the near side. Brandon with a good pickup. And Spencer gets a good D and then hands it right back. That one went in. I thought so, but I thought I heard it, but I wasn't sure watching the screen. With the, uh, when Ryan and Brandon played for the USTSO uh, championship, yeah, Brandon had a couple that... Well, a couple I didn't think went in, and then Donald came up here and sat next to me, and there was one where we were both sitting here like, that definitely didn't go. Yeah. <laughs> and Ryan ended up winning, so it wasn't an issue, but uh, I didn't go back and watch, but I was definitely like, I'm almost positive that didn't go in. Yeah, it's crazy. Some of these tables, I played on, like, two this weekend that if you shoot, like, it sounds, it just, like, it's coming in and out every time. It's like, this is fun. I don't know what changed that about other tables, but it's fun. It is funny how, like, year to year you get new tables, and it's, like, something wonky, like, consistently wonky about the new badge. Well, there's something really cool about Sully's table. Like, when we play there, like, if you hit a banger, it goes out. Like, it goes in your goal, and it'll come out the other goal because it'll spin down because it has, like, the home model thing, so it has oh. the ramp down. It's so fun, though. Like, cool. It's like you didn't hit a good one unless you know, like, it came Came back. out the other yeah, side? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Sullivan's playing on a home model? Well, we used to, yeah. Okay. But, you know, she wanted, we wanted a table the world, so she got a new table. But, you know, before we were just playing on that old, uh, with the one with the plastic points. Like, you, you pull the plastic points that with the numbers on them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, these are plastic too, aren't they? These are wooden. Are they wood? I believe. Maybe. Yeah, okay. You're right. I guess I never really thought about it. Yeah. As Brandon and Isabel trying to put this one away. And Brandon can't get that one to nice go. Pass nice pass. Well. Brandon Munoz for the match. Brushes it to the far side. And in two games, some awkward fist bump slash handshaking. You and fist bump before, you handshake after. There, That is some knowledge that you need to hear for new players. Yeah, It is funny. Because then you get into a pickle. Yeah. <laughs> like, the, God, like when you're like walking at somebody and you both go one the same direction a bunch of times. Um but no, so you get the winner of that, right? You get to play them? Yes. Um, and I do have a confirmation from Terry Rue. It is an illegal push out, and that was the correct call. Okay, cool. So that is correct, yes. You can't All just right. push it out. Thank you, Mr. Rue. Thank you, Mr. Rue. Always appreciate the insight. All right. I'm going to go hit some balls real quick. All right. Good luck. Thanks for keeping me company. Of and, uh, course. Thanks for having me. I'm going to guess we're going to see you on the other side of this camera in just a second. Maybe. And I, well, what were we talking about that you had to do? Oh, pull side flippy. Yeah, definitely. Get up front. I mean, or do it from the two bar. Do it from the two bar. What? I don't know. I've never tried it. Just spray it all the way from the wall. All right. If it's going in, you can mark it down. <laughs> Spot me a point. It's going in. All right. Well, hey, big thanks to Hannah Smith for keeping me company here as we get set to get our next match in. Once Brandon and Isabel put the result in. On that note, also, I'm going to take a second to get out of the booth here, but stay tuned. We're still live on Twitch and YouTube, so hang tight. We're going to do that. We may do that for the rest of the night. Uh, still got a ways to go through that winner bracket. I think. Final group. We are down to our. Uh, we're still waiting for our final eight. Real quick update before I leave the booth. Tommy Yor, Eric Hilton, Rube playing Sam Bajan, Cody Byrie. That's going to be a good one. Uh, I believe that's Sean Lee and. Matt Jenkins the stage. New Tran playing Tony Gashi and where'd they go? Alfred Lowe, who Hannah was just speaking about earlier. And the three seat, Dewey Culpepper and his brother Shannon taking on Uncle Mike, Yor, and Brandon Moreland. Ryan Moore and Paul Smith are still awaiting. The winner of a match. Where are they? Cancel that match on eight. Rabbi, what Rabbi cancel that match on eight? Oh, no. They're still waiting on the winner of Chris Boyd and Eddie Mubarak. They're making a nice run. 
Oh, and Jason Binder and Andre Tronk. Good players. I don't mean to sound surprised, but I played Andre Tronk in rookie something like two years ago. So good for them. And, uh, so that'll be some combination of those two teams will finish up, or one of those two teams will make up our final eight. And we'll be back for those matches as soon as we get another match called here on table number one. All right, folks, I am going to leave for real, but I just want to give you a quick update. Sam Dijon and Blake Robertson are getting ready to square off on table number two in open singles for a chance to get to that uh, call it losers bracket final, the match for third. So if you want to ho hop over there and check that out, that should.
And we welcome you back to Inside Foose's coverage of the 2024 Kentucky State Championships. That's some more open doubles action for you. On the left of your screen, that's Russell Achana up front. Hannah Smith in back on the right. That's, what's that guy's name? Brandon Munoz. And Isabella Stelly in the back. This one on the loser side for 17th or better. And Russell going to have the first opportunity on it. As Russell spikes that one back into the goal, and that gives them a 1 0 lead. Munoz going up tempo, hand are ready for it. As Brandon gets that one to go, so all tied up at one here. Well, Brandon showing off his far wall series. Fires near side, now 2 1. Seeing a little bit more of the wheeling and dealing Brandon Munoz of old here early in this match. As he loses the handle there, it looked like he was getting ready to do something cool. Hannah sends one down the middle of the table, and Chana picks it up. And Russell now, an opportunity. Tries to go far side, can't get it. Isabel, nice job hanging on to it. Tries the near wall pass. Brandon gets it on the five. Good deep brush up. Doing his middle ball thing. And sprays that one to the far side on Hannah. Now three, one, three unanswered for Isabel and Brandon. Good pump fake there from Russell. As Russell cannot get that one to go, so Isabel now looking to clear. Tries a pull kick. Doubles down on it. Russell now tries to come near side. Isabel another good block. Oh, beautiful pass. Isabel to Hannah as Brandon splits that one to the near side. Tight hole and Russell and Hannah call time out as they find themselves quickly in a 4 1 hole. I'll take a quick little peek over at the YouTube chat because why not? You guys hanging out late with us? See if we can get some crowd interaction here. As we are back in the way here, and Russell having a hard time against Brandon's five bar D there as Isabel eventually comes up with it. And gets that one to go, so it wasn't pretty, but that's how game number one comes to an end. table so Hannah now is took with the bank series tries the pass Brandon turns it back her way gets rid of it so Isabel now so had a bit of a beat on that one Isabel sends that one just wide of the goal. Yeah. And for the pull shot, has it blocked back her way, able to keep it out. Switching to the bank series, tries to go outside, and Isabel able to keep it out. Nice job there by Isabel. That was headed for pay dirt. Oh, 
Isabel tries that outside wall pass. And Brandon continues to play some excellent five bar D as Hannah gets rid of it quickly again. And now Isabel trading possessions with her counterpart. As Hannah again looks to clear. It's another. Shot on goal there. Sorry, hearing some announcements being made here. This is Isabel. Almost turns it over, but Brandon comes up with it on the five. Uh oh. They will make this to go five for the lights, please. And it does look like we're going to get that. Another color commentator right here for you folks. As we are still in a scoreless ball game here in the second, but I now have. So if we get quiet, that means that no one at home can hear us. We're loud on the headsets, unfortunately. It, that's why I, I always have audio issues. I'm like, oh, you're too quiet. Like, it's loud as heck in my headset. Um, but I can try and t the monitor. Doesn't really go down. Okay. Um, but anyway. Uh, now the pleasure of being joined once again by a Wildcat, Judy Schober. Judy, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Keep me coming here for this open doubles match. Brandon and Isabel got the first game relatively quickly. And this has been an incredibly long first ball of the second game. So, Brandon oh, fixes that. Oh, that was nice. Yeah, Farman Flippy. Farman Flippy. Yes. A little less conventional. Mm hmm. Do you know who put Brandon and uh, Isabel in the losers? I do. It was uh, Alfred Lowe and Tony Gashi, who are still in the final eight on the undefeated side. Nice. Which they're holding till tomorrow, we found out. Oh, really? Yeah. So they're going to work their losers bracket tonight. What are they starting tomorrow? What, around noon, 1 o'clock? I'm not sure. Th didn't get that much information. I'll look on the bracket. As Hannah looking to clear here. I don't know if they oh, updated on the bracket. Yeah, nice pass from Hannah to Russell. As he has a chance to equalize now. Tries to go long on the pole shot. Can't get it. Sticking with the pole. Goes straight. We are all tied up at one apiece. I got I want the ability. Oh, you, I had, that's the first time I've seen him use that option. That was slick. Have you seen his middle dot pull shot thing that he's doing? No, I haven't. Uh, well, it's interesting, but he just ripped it into a bump kick to the pu push kick as Hannah gets that one to go. So not two two. We well, just he did a uh, far wall on that last five bar series, wasn't it? Yeah, he's been passing all over the table, but uh, yeah, it's a three-bar. Hannah. That's two. Yeah, it looks like Brandon might have got a piece in that one and knocked yep. it in, but it's 3-2 now either way in favor. Ellen oh, Roswell with the pickup, and just like that, it's 4-2 here in game number two. As Brandon works that one down to the wall. He's going to stay out. He basically does this. But he ripped it into a bump kick a second ago. He either pulls it or he'll br br brush it and spray it back to the other corner. It's an interesting theory on the series. Doesn't seem like it should work, and he's not obviously not doing it. Um, I mean, it's going to fool you if you follow the man and not the ball. Well, I mean, that's the other thing. It's, you can go, sh you can hit it straight, brush back the other way, pull it, rip it into a bump kick like he just did a second ago, rip it into a slingshot if you wanted to. Uh, so it's got some options. It's just never been really done before. And there's a sh name for every shot in foosball. We just need to come up with one for that. I want to coin it. That was a good clear from Hannah. Get it up, and uh, Russell picked it up on his three-bar. Tried to tuck it. Yep, tries to pull. It. But Isabel now looking to clear. Almost has that one. Stuff back. Puts a good shot on goal, and Brandon... Fires that one down the middle, cuts the lead to 4-3. Mm -hmm. 
He needs this possession. And you don't want to let Brandon pick oh, up geez. steam. Commentator's curse. Uh, he hammers that one back into the goal. Now we are all tied up at 4-4, and it is match point in favor of Isabel and Brandon. And has been able to get rid of it. Now it'll be Hannah's turn. Ooh, that one almost trickled in there. As Brandon grabs that one off the five bar. And nice grab. Pounds it through the lane. And loses the handle. Oh, good time for a time out. Hannah D. Smith. Hannah keeping. I'm going to pretend I didn't see that comment on YouTube. I'm still coining it. <laughs> Apparently, it's, someone's claiming it already has a name. That series that he's uh, yeah. Brandon's shooting from the three. I wasn't looking for crowdsourcing. I'm going to do it myself, but I appreciate you guys interacting. Now, uh, apparently a player out in Colorado used to run it, and they called it the Moose Dot in, in, in honor of his name. I guess that was a gentleman that came up that was shooting it. As Munoz now oh, nice block. fails to put away the match, so now Isabel's going to go down have the to middle, clear. and Hannah was there. And Russell comes up with the loose ball. Good. Firm wall pass there. Tries to go long, and Isabel is able to deny him. Tries the near side, just feeding Brandon the ball there, and oh. also couldn't hang on. Good defense there. Just didn't hold it. Nice, right, Brandon Munoz. Tries to come near side. Hannah was out there waiting for him, and the loose ball kicks around and in. And Hannah is not happy about that. But the end result is Brandon Munoz and Isabel Stelly advance the 17th or better on the loser side of this open doubles event. It's kind of interesting how it just seems like uh, Hannah and, and Russell there, they, they got three that kind of trickled in for him, helped him out, and then they just, yeah. the last two points went uh, Brandon and Isabel's Trickled in for them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, they had, what was it, a 4-2 lead? Yeah, but they I were up 4-2. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just a quick little update on the other things going on around there. Oh, that match on table two, Sam Dijon beat Blake, beat Blake Robertson. And that was for fourth, correct? Yeah, so he'll play... Ahmed Taha and Jacob Balcos have to play. Brandon Munoz gets the winner of that. And then Sam will play the winner of that for third. That's how that new system works. Did we already get another match call? Nope. Okay. People just wandering back to the booth or the pit. Oh, no. They did already call it. Oh, this should be a fun one. You ever seen Michael Lee play before? I have. <laughs> yeah. I uh, met Michael Lee down in Texas State. And, um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it's gonna what's, be a, what's the over-under on swing shots? Uh, well, we, 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 Hannah and I, oh, did, did you listen when Hannah and I of did that? Of course I yeah, did. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was at Louisiana State. We were chatting. Yeah. Um, yeah. I got He slowed it down with that because I kept getting Hannah because she kept taking the over. We'll call it over-under three and a half, meaning if he shoots three or fewer, that's the under. If he shoots four or more, that's the over. I'm taking the over. You're going to go over? I'll take the under. All right. He's been, like I said, he's been kind of getting his game together a little what bit. What do we got, more. a quarter? Uh, I don't know that I have a quarter on me. I have. I literally never carry cash. Oh, I have a quarter in my uh, my foosball bag. Yeah, I'll bet you a quarter. Okay, you're on for a quarter. All right. Well, folks, uh, it's going to be Michael Lee and uh, Mark Matteris. Yeah. Oh, I'm on the ball, yeah. I got that graphic updated as soon as I saw it. That, that was quick. 
Keith Glenn not messing around. I don't, I, I, you get used to doing these things, hanging out up here all day, you know? Yeah, isn't it kind of funny? You ha kind of have muscle memory of certain oh, yes. players that you can type their name, like, faster than your own. Well, not even that. I've never called a mar uh, match of Mark Matarises before, but it's just all the things that I need to do in my head before we get settled in for a match. It's just you kind of fire it off. Like, all right, where are we? What's going on? Um, which I will tell you I didn't get right. Was I didn't going through your checklist. Didn't do that, yeah. See, but we got there. Update the round. This is for 13th or better. Yeah, I met uh, Michael Lee. We have an o we have an over we have an over under on your slingshots. We're not we can't tell you what it is, but we're betting on how many slingshots you can shoot. We're not gonna tell you. you just got to play your game. Light Isabel up with him, man. Michael Lee, great. I want to call him a kid, but I don't know he's that young. So the team on the right going to be out of Mississippi. Team on the left, kind of out of Louisiana slash Costa Rica. Oh, yep. And Michael's father? Hmm? Michael's father, Liam Lee? Haven't met him. I think he's a uh, well-known, well-known. Oh, like uh, L-I-E-M? -L -I yes. I have yeah. seen that name. Yeah. I'm not familiar with the gentleman, yeah. though. Yeah, I think when I was in uh, Texas State, Dusty introduced me and said, uh, this is Liam Lee's son, Michael. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, yeah, I had heard that he was going to travel a little more. Yeah, and here he is. Because the only two places I've ever seen him were Mississippi, Mississippi State, State and, and Louis Louisiana State, yeah. Yeah, uh, well, Texas better. State, you, you haven't been to, but he, he I've goes. I've been to Texas. Actually, last year was the first year I missed Texas since I started playing which I guess I, I went to two. I went okay. to 2021 and 2022. Okay. Oh, yeah, uh, I put you out of rookie doubles with uh, Miles McGregor. I was playing with Miles. You're I do right. remember that. I do remember that. Yeah, that was two years ago. Yeah. Man, Miles and I should have done so much better in that. I did not play well, but it happens. That's such a fun tournament. I really enjoy it, and I'm oh, really Texas glad is, that, yeah. I yeah. was bummed I didn't go last year. It was the smart decision. For me, but I wanted to make a dumb decision. Yeah, we went and um, best one of the the best parts. I uh, got there early, and you know they, I hadn't having been there the year before. When I asked, any way we can get poolside? She said sure. So we had a poolside room, had a door, had a patio. Nice. Oh, it was really nice because that's a nice hotel. I like, did you, as we're getting ready to get on our way here, did you go in 2021? I did not. 20, that hotel was. 2223. So 2223, at my understanding, was in the same hotel. So I've been to that hotel. It's very nice. More yeah. nicer than anything we normally yeah. do. Yeah. The one in 21 was even nicer. As we are set to get on our way here, and Brandon can have the first scoring opportunity. He takes it and converts. It's now one nothing, And favor the team on the left. So, yeah, if you're unfamiliar with Michael's game, we kind of alluded to it earlier as Brandon already makes it 2 nothing. Michael... Is a, just as much of a gunslinger as Brandon Munoz, slowing things down here. But he he likes to let the ball fly, and he's pretty good at it. Oh, <laughs> you, a you, dink! You can't out Brandon Munoz, Brandon Munoz. No, you cannot. So Michael Lee calls timeout. Hits you with a couple hundred miles an hour and then throws you a 60-mile-an-hour changeup over the plate. And then what do you And do? I may owe you a quarter because I don't know if Michael's going to get the ball. That's, I mean, hadn't thought of that. But, yeah. Well, let's see what he does here. There's some talking going on on, on the table. Yeah. this is a I think I've called a match between these two before because I remember commenting that watching the two of them go at it is always fun. Down the middle, 4 nothing. What are we, three minutes into this match? <laughs> Not even. Oh, Michael Lee with a nice little runner. Sets up for the rollover. Fires to the far side. All it's 4-1, right. and we're getting a defensive switch. They're going to claw their way back into this. And as Mark keeps it off Brandon's three, that's a W. Are right, these slingshots? Slingshots out of the back, huh? I'll, 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 okay. I'll count right. that. Oh, I, oh, geez. The, uh, I think it was, I don't know if he turned that over. He thought he jarred him. Oh, no, because he didn't put, do ready protocol. Yeah, he just turned it over. Yeah, he just. Brandon's left hook almost ends up in his own goal.
pass goes the long way to the five bar, and Brandon dials in the big left hook, and game number one is in the books. I saw Brandon walking in with a bag of food. I think he's afraid it's going to get cold. Yeah, I mean, this is what I was saying is that he's been seemingly playing a little more conserved. He's in this loser bracket that we've seen, and he's really letting it rip as Michael Lee works that one to the wall. Up yep, one. Okay. Yeah. There's Isabel. Oh, Michael Lee with a good defensive effort. Sets up for the rollover. Comes near side, well executed. It's one, one nothing in favor of Michael and Mark. He's only had three, three bar possessions. He's two for two on a snake. I think that'll prevent him from doing another. Wow, that one. Uh, yeah, two solid blocks. Yeah. Good job, Mark. Mark uh, turns it over, unfortunately, and this time Brandon converts now one one. Skippy pass, sets up for the rollover. Tries to go far side, blocked, picked up by Brandon Munoz. Tries another hook. And Michael can't quite hang on, so Isabel will take possession. Isabel wants to get in action. Yeah, that, that was. You don't get a lot of lateral movement with that pin. No, front pin to. That's to, a great example to of the why dot that. and try to go down the middle on Brandon. That's not advisable. No, it's a good, a great example of why that shot doesn't get shot a lot as oh. Brandon rolls that into the pull kick and it's three one and Michael Lee calls timeout. For a guy that plays as fast and loose as he does, he's very good at table management with his timeouts. You would expect him to just keep go, 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 go the way he plays, but no, he, he calms yeah. it down every once in a while. Well, he has a pattern, though. He has a pattern for his timeouts, doesn't he? I think, uh, I, think I did know that. Yeah, was it like a lot of times, sometimes it's 1-0. Didn't he, didn't he do, or no, 3-2. Maybe it was 3-2. Three three two. Two yeah. It's 3-1 here. They just announced $4 shots at the concession stand. It's going to get loud in here. Yeah. And no stampede. I'll tell you what, the stands we've we've got uh, we've got a crowd watching this. Yeah, I think a lot of the room cleared out as they're starting to wind down matches for this evening. Yeah, they got the DYP. They're still going. Yeah, Munoz fires that one down the middle now. Four one. Oh, nice little angle up there for Michael Lee, and that's number two. He just buried a nice thing shot, and he gets him back. And Brandon Munoz. He needs a possession. Put it away. Michael needs two more slingshots yeah, that's, to that's hit the not, over. Yeah. Uh, but Ooh, well. Brandon keeps it. Or Michael keeps it out. And flippy to the far corner for Brandon Munoz as he and Isabel Stelle defeat Michael Lee and Mark Matarese in two games to advance the 13th or better on the loser side of open doubles. And I owe you a quarter. And you owe me a quarter. Got close. What do, yeah, what? he did not have a ton of possessions. No, he did not. What do we got going on over there at table two? Can you see anything? Wow, they finished that. It has been 10 minutes since that match got it was called. called. Let alone get here, flip, wrap up. Um, sorry, what did you say? What's going on where? Table two. Uh, oh, wait. I thought they weren't going to play those tonight. Or did somebody knock Blake and his buddy out? What we oh, yeah, they're on the loser side. They're playing in the same round that this match was just in. Um, Matt McCrory and Mark Vanetti are currently 0-0 in the first against Blake Robertson. Oh, no, wait, they might be up a game. I can't see the game counter. It's 0-0 in whatever game they have. It's either the first or second. With, if it is the second, it's with McCrory and Vanetti up one. Ooh, 
not, though. Well, over here on table four, we have um, an open doubles losers bracket for 17th, 24th. We have Mike Philbrook and Chase Pinnell, and they are down a game, but they're up 4-2 in the second against Danny Bennett and Bob, Bob Hamilton. Hamilton. Danny just stroked home a rollover, so it's 4-3. Phil's got the ball on his five bar, brushing down. See if he's got it in roller position. Well, uh, Judy, you are more than welcome to hang out here and riff and give, keep people an update on four. I need to step out of the booth here for a minute. Um, I haven't been in my room in 12 hours. And, uh, okay, never mind. We're going to take a little break, folks. Judy, thank you so much for keeping company for that match. Thank you, Keith. Always appreciate having someone to talk to up here so I don't sound like a crazy person just talking to myself. But we're going to take a quick little break here, folks. Like I said, I think we're probably going to stay on YouTube and Twitch for the rest of the night. Uh, I need to talk to my super producer, Ashley, figure out uh, what our game plan is here. And I said that on air because I think she might be listening, wherever she may be. Um, but we're going to take a break. I'm going to get out of the booth, and we will be right back. So we're going to be a match call here on table number one.
All right, folks, welcome back to Inside Foods Coverage of the 2024 Kentucky State Championships. I do apologize. I got caught up outside the booth there. On the left of your screen, that's Brandon Munoz. On the right, that's Jacob Balcos. Jacob took the first two games. Brandon just took that necessary game three, so Jacob still with a chance. As he fires that one home, takes a one nothing lead. Jacob can put this one away here in game number three, or excuse me, four. As Brandon responds in kind, deep to the far side. Jacob, a little too hot there, couldn't hang on. And they get it back on his five. Slow chip up, love it. As Jacob puts one in the four wheel drive, and that's two on this match. Uh, I've got it up as third or better, but it's four, fourth on the loser side. I think the winner of this goes on to play Sam Dijon. Nope. Yep. I got that right. Yeah. Nice. Jacob gets that one to go. He's got a 3-1 lead. He needs two more balls. We could have a, I call it loser's bracket final match for third. Between a couple of guys with an average age of 16. And Jacob might only be 16. Jacob fires that one down the middle. He needs one more. Gives himself a little fist bump. Pump. As Brandon grabs on this five. Jacob comes up with possession. Hammers it through the lane. Jacob Alco's for the match. And he fires near side, and in four games, Jacob Balcos defeats and eliminates Brandon Munoz. He will advance to play Sam Dijon for third place. We gotta update our graphics. We don't have a thing for. I could leave the same one up there for the next match. Yeah, actually. Okay. I assume that'll get called up immediately. I don't think Sam. They paused open doubles on the winner side for this evening. Those matches scheduled for 3 p.m. tomorrow. Oh, no, sorry, that was from today. I'm looking at the open singles bracket. Let's get the open doubles bracket up. See if they have those matches scheduled yet. They do not. So we don't know when those are going to start. But your final eight in open doubles. Lee Tran, Gashi Lowe, Col Coley Culpepper, Your Moreland, Boyd Mubarak, Moore Smith, Your Hiltner, and Dijon Byrie. It's unfortunate. I mean, obviously, seating matters. But I think the match that's going to be the best of watch out of all those is going to be Sam Dijon and Cody Byrie against Tommy Your and Eric Hiltner. It's unfortunate they met that early. Well, folks, we're getting into the wee hours here. It's now officially after 1 a.m. Probably don't have too much foosball left. Exciting weekend of foosball. Some excitement away from the table. Had some theatrics yesterday morning, but everything turned out to be okay. Only slightly delayed the tournament.
Still got a lot of good foosball left to go. We got an exciting open singles match. Local news crews on hand. Some of that battle of a match that went five games between Tommy Yor and Ryan Moore. Ultimately won in the fifth game by Ryan Moore's two bar. Only hit one three bar shot that entire match. Seen a handful of overtimes. Sam DeJean almost eliminated <laughs> Ryan from contention for that match, but couldn't quite get there. And now Sam playing Jacob Bankos for third. I see Sam over talking to Jacob's dad. So I don't know if they're going to be playing that match. Foosball Radio also on site, streaming live. Just off to my right, Randy Raposo, Tom Robinson, currently hanging out with USTSO president and uh, tournament director for this tournament, Donald Wilson. So you can always tune in with them. If you're not, don't feel like hanging out and listening to me kill dead air. We're still free on YouTube and Twitch, so feel free to chime in, say hi, and check out the comments here. What's a good time killer we could talk about while we're waiting on another match here? Thanks, Joseph. I don't know if you're still listening, but... Appreciate the kind words, always. Got a handful of them today. If you have any negative feedback, you can share that too, as long as it's constructive. And you can share it even if it's not constructive, I'm just not gonna pay attention to it. Oh, here's a good one. I'm gonna drive some engagement. Let me pull up Twitch. I have that on my phone. Is a hot dog a sandwich? First person to give me an ex a proper explanation. Oh, Richard Herneman chimed in there. That was good to hear from Richard. Hope you're doing well down there in Mississippi. Actually, that's a good question. Let me uh, let me hop out of the booth again, and I'm gonna go. See if I can find Miss Mary Moore or Kristen and get an official answer on how many players showed up this weekend. I'll be right back. Come up with those good explanations as to whether or not a hot
All right. Got an official number so far. A little less than what we had thought off the room sales and everything and the way it's felt in here all weekend. But the official number right now is 288. So 12 shy of what we got to last year. I think we hit 300 on the nose. So hopefully that answers that question. And hop on here and see if anybody wanted to argue about what, whether or not a hot dog is a sandwich. There we go. ESP Moon. No, because it's never sold as a sandwich. Feels like a burger could be found on a burger or a sandwich, though. Sam Dijon's name is Sam. We call Everyone calls him Sammy, but Sammy Dijon does sound like a sandwich with mustard on it. But, okay, so a couple years ago, uh, before I got into foosball, I did. Ha this is not my first obscure sport that I've fanatically got into as a hobby. I used to play ultimate frisbee, and we used to get together and practice and do conditioning drills and stuff, and we would always joke around about different things like this. This is really the only one that's probably appropriate for the broadcast. But we went into detailed depth, digging and digging and digging about what qualifies as a sandwich. And if there's certain things you're going to accept as a sandwich, which everyone does, you have to consider a hot dog a sandwich. There's a grocery chain in the southeast called Publix that makes subs, which everyone considers a sandwich. They do not split the bread all the way through. And so, which also, by the way, makes a taco a sandwich. Same definition. Um, it's like, oh, no, well, you know, it has to be meat and something else. It's like, well, an ice cream sandwich. Everyone calls that a sandwich. It doesn't have meat in it. You could have a veggie sandwich. I don't have to think about all of the examples that we used for our case study precedent, but I, oh, hey, Alan. Uh, I was literally just talking to Nina, too, right before I came back here after talking to Mary. I could have asked him, but Sam's going to be playing for uh, Jacob Blackwell's for third or better, or for third, not better, can't be better. Ryan's one, Tommy's two. But Sam having a heck of a weekend. And he came so close in that match against Ryan. Let's see, we're getting a little better interaction. I don't know where he went. But it looks like we're getting a little better interaction on YouTube than we are on Twitch. So we'll hang out here in the comments. I know I had some buddies in uh, Academy mates hanging out on there earlier. Also, we've been talking about it all weekend. It's really cool. The two guys that got me into the sport are here with me this weekend for the first time. The three of us could all make a tournament at the same time. And uh, if you're talking about trying to figure out how to grow your local scene, it's been a while since you got a new player, you need to grab the ear of Perry Palacio and Tony Cinco because as far as I'm aware, I don't know anybody that's had more success getting people into the game, young adults. Some of them are older than me, and I'm in my mid-30s, but We have a group chat that does not include all of our regulars, but we had to kick people out because certain people's phones couldn't hold a group chat with more than 20 people. So they have found a formula that works, even though it's tough to execute. To try and bring in new players. As it looks like we're going to get some open doubles action here. Uh, table number one. Still pretty far back in that bracket. But we're going to get to see some big dogs here. Former teammates, if I, my history of the game before I came around is correct. On the right, it's going to be Billy Pappas and David Maring, who we have seen a bunch of. But we're going to get our first look here on table one of the weekend at 
Hani Najjar and Trevor Park. And it looks like Trevor's going to be man in nets. I've seen Hani play before. He's a very good player. Oh, what did I, the heck did I do in this graphic here? Oh, there we go. Still had Brandon's name up there. That was no potential. side for 13th or better. All right, graphics up to date. See if I can grab a color commentator to come up here and keep us company. Who's floating around? I'm trying to get Dewey to talk on mic is like trying to get blood from a stone, so that's not going to work. Randy's still doing Foos Talk Lives or Foosball Radio stuff. Okay, it looks like we are set to get underway here, so Hani going to put the ball on a play. As Billy denies his first pass attempt, and the second one finds its mark. Oh, that open singles match? They're going to play that on three. That is unfortunate. You guys can watch at home as Hani fires that one down the middle and gets them out to a 1 0 lead. Sam Dijon and Jacob Balcos playing that last match of the open singles bracket over on table three, so you can tune in there. There's Hani getting back to work on the five. As Trevor clears it, and Hani almost grabs it off the back wall, but David rails it in. And we've seen David throw some beautiful passes here on table one so far today as he finds Billy on the wall there. Billy fires that one near side, and we are tied at 1-1. I want to look at the bracket. I don't know who put Hani and Trevor in the losers, but we watched Billy Pappas and David Maring fall to Sam Dijon, who's having a heck of a weekend and may be named after a sandwich, and Cody Byrie in exciting five games. Wait, did that one go over time? No, it didn't. Almost did. As Trevor Park looking to clear, able to find Hani's five bar. As Hani playing some good five bar D. Let's see if we can find Hani and Trevor in here. Four pages to dig through. David looking to clear here. Sends it up the middle of the table, able to find Billy's five bar. Tries the wall on Honey again, denies him. And Honey now looking to retake the lead. Tries to go back to the short side. Can't get it. Gets that one to go, so 2 1 now in favor of the team on the right. Oh, Hani and Trevor were the seventh seed. They lost to Chris Boyd and Eddie Mubarak, the 26th seed, who are still alive on the winner's side. Oh, no, sorry. I lied. Ryan and Paul put them in the losers finally, but they made it deep. Oh, no, they did not put them in the losers finally. They still have to play. So, yeah, they're still alive on the winner's side. Good run for them. Trevor able to work that one up, not clean, but finds Hani's three bar anyway. Hani still shooting from the offset. Tries to come down the middle, can't get it. And 
Trevor again. Positive result as Hani now walking. Tries to go down the middle, puts it in four wheel drive as David got the block, but it spins into the goal. So 3 1 now. As Billy able to work that one up to his three bar, looking to cut in the lead here. Fires to the far side. He got Trevor on the switch there. It's now 3 2. their lead and David gets a block as it leaves the table and rolls under it. David throws another beautiful pass up to Billy. Tries to go deep to the far side. Billy catches the deflection, looking to tie it up. Billy tries to come near side, grabs the rebound. Bluffing the Euro, drops his wrist. Walks. Calls timeout. That is a great constructive criticism as Billy puts the ball back into play. Fires near side and we're all tied up at three. I don't normally play when I come to work, but Miss Mary Moore always encourages me to. So at Louisiana State, I did for the first time and I'm gonna do it again this weekend. I have one event that I'm playing in tomorrow morning. So hopefully I can find myself on the other side of this camera at some point. Billy with a nice deep brush down there. Chance to take the lead. Billy fires near side, got Trevor on the switch again. And it's now 4 3. There's Hani now looking to equalize. Tries to come down the middle, can't get it. Oh, and Hani with the pin ties things up at four, and timeout is called. I believe Hani and Trevor called that one. Yep, playing some rookie dubs tomorrow. Still hanging out the actually, I have low rookie. As much as I get to travel, I haven't gotten to play much, but hopefully tomorrow we'll get some positive results. I've been watching everybody play some good foosball all week, and hopefully I can put some of that into practice as Billy gets this final ball underway. Good deep brush down to the wall. Fires near side and game number one goes to Billy Pappas and David Maring. Quick update for you on that open singles match over on table three. Jacob Backless currently looks like he's up 3-2. Sammy just got a nice block as we are set to get game number two underway. Like Matt McCrory and Mark Manetti just won their match over on two. As Honey tries to get on the middle and can't get it. David playing some good defense. That's how they got back into that. Honey had a ha handful of shots. As David turns that one over. And again, David. David's had a couple of turnovers from the matches that we've seen on here on one. 
I don't think any of them have cost him. How strong is my commentator's curse? Let's find out. Oh, man. Thank you, Mr. Teal. Continuing to feed me confectionaries on the side. That is that one. Pappas now on a one nothing ball game. Advances, looking to equalize. Fires near side. It's now 1-1. One -one. Nice chip up there from Jar as Marin. Continuing a strong defense. He loaded up to go push and eventually went that way. David throws another good pass. Trevor keeps the deflection out. Pap has got a piece of that. So now Park. I realize I'm bouncing back and forth between first and last names. Sprays that one just wide of the goal. And Billy on the attempted pickup. Spikes it back into his own goal. It's a kick there on the table. So 2-1 now in favor of Najar and Park. Billy brushes that one on. Comes near side and Trevor blocks it up off the table. Okay. Might as well. <laughs> All right, Eric Hillner doesn't want to join me on mic. He just wants to stand here and watch. That's fine. As Billy now looking to cut into the lead, he does now 3 2. Nice up there from Jar. Looking to extend their lead, and he does. It's now 4 2. Good five bar D. He calls timeout. While well, I'm in this timeout, I'm going to get off mic real quick and eat this chocolate that Jay brought me. Well, I didn't get to eat my chocolate, but we had a little bit of a technical error here in a f as we have a 4-3 ball game. And a jar. Unfortunately, turns it over as Pappas. Able to pop that one through the lane. Tries to go quick and whiffs on it. Still got plenty of time to regrip, but instead he calls timeout. Take another. As we are back on the way here, Trevor looking to clear, but making it difficult. And Hani with a nice pickup to advance to his three. Taking a little quick peek over there at the Twitch comments. Richard, you were my first draw partner ever. As Hani fires that near sign, and we're going to a third and final game. The other comment over on Twitch, who's older, Sammy or Jacob? Um, Sam is 15, I think Jacob is 16. I think he told me he's driving now. So I think Jacob's a little bit older as Billy gets game number three underway with a good brush up. And he opened scoring going to the far side. And as a jar now. 
Tries to come down the middle and Dave and able to keep that one out. There's Dave and looking to clear. And gets the ball on Billy's five bar. Honey trying to be a good sport, asking if he's jar. I didn't think so. And Billy says no, he didn't get me. But good sportsmanship always love to see that. There's no jar now, looking to tie things up, fires to the far side, and he gets it. Uh, to answer the question about whether or not this is a low turnout, uh, 300 players for TKO is pretty good. That's what they had last year, but they were expecting to beat it, and they haven't yet. We don't know who's going to show up tomorrow for the events, but... Oh, a little skippy there from Billy. Tries to come near side, Trevor able to keep it out. Does, doubles down on it and gets it back. Walks and fires to the near side. 2-1 lead now for Devin and Billy. Again, I mentioned it earlier when we were calling some matches for uh, Billy and Devin, but Devin reigning champion of the Open Doubles event here at Kentucky State. Will not have the opportunity to repeat with the championship format, but he did come back and double dip last year, I believe, with his partner, Tony Spradman. Pretty sure it was double dip. 95% sure. And this time, they've been able to find Billy's three. Fires right down the middle, it's now 3-1. See if Hani and Trevor have a response. Billy almost gets a takeaway, but unable to hang on. And good deep brush up there for Najar. Sets up for the rollover. Feels like they need this one. As he comes near side and clips the wall, gets the rebound. David unable to grab it. Tries to go far side, can't get that to go either, so. Maring and Pappas take possession with a chance to go up 4-1. And they try that pass again. This time, Hani got a piece. Trevor almost gets Hani three bar off the back wall, but David ends up with it. David avoids the turnover, and the ball comes to rest. So, David Marion puts it back into play. side and David continues to answer the call. There's Trevor now looking to get rid of the ball. his five bar attempt end up back with his goalie there's Trevor tries to send that one up the middle of the table can't get it to go Billy intercepts good patient work there by Pappas tries to go quick to the far side and that one finds the wall kicks back Hani comes up with a rebound Playing some good defense, he loses the handle, drops his wrist, and calls timeout. Looks like he might have thought about rushing that. And it does look like, let's see if I can get somebody's attention over there during this timeout. The match between Sam Dijon and Jacob Valdez has just ended. I think Jacob got it, but I'm not sure. Jacob did get it? Okay, thanks, bud. Jacob did get that one, so your top four in open singles as we are set to resume play here on table one. Ryan Moore, Tommy Yor, Jacob Balcos, and Sam Dijon. 
As Hani tries to come back near side, can't get it to go. As David able to clear, but now it's Trevor's turn. Billy's five. A little bit of a discussion here. Everyone's laughing. Looks like we've got it figured out. So, Honey going to take it on a five. Fires down the middle. That cuts the lead in half now. 3 2. That was a long ball. Billy's first pass attempt is turned back his way, so he will do it again. This time connects. Tries to come near side, and again, Trevor able to deny him. And Trevor gets that one back. Billy had to stab at it. Park able to work it through to his partner's three bar. Hani Najjar looking to equalize. Fires to the short side and we are all tied up at three. I don't believe we are deep enough where this would go over time. Yeah, it's still two out of three. It's 13 through 16, so next two balls win. Back to work on the five. Turning into a bit of a defensive battle here. As of late, and Billy can't connect. Got a little too much of the wall there on that brush down. And he gets a steal from Trevor. Fires quick to the near side. And it is now match ball in favor of Billy Pappas and David Mary. Good tight brush down there. For Najar, he fires that one, kicks around. David got a piece of it. And we're all tied up at four, so we will play one final ball. Winner take all. It's going to be Pappas with the first shot at it. Uh, Pappas joking that he's going to rip a left hook. Part of me hopes he does. Do it as mm, nice pump fake there, brushes it up. Has the timeout. Tries to come near side, and Trevor able to keep it out, so they take position with a chance to put it away. Going with the bank series, bluffing that outside. Tries to clear it, can't. Goes back to the pole shot. Sprays it just short of the goal, but Hani able to pick it up on his five. Hani Najjar, patient five bar work. Brushes up, and Hani Najjar with a chance to put it away. Tries to go down the middle, and David comes up with a huge block to keep his team in it. But Hani quickly advances, so he's going to have a chance to do it again, and this time David gets the block and possession. A little bit of a discussion, but nothing to stop play until David calls timeout. I think they have both of theirs. So if Billy wants to get back there and try and shoot, he can hope that David picks it up. Puts it back into play. I don't know why Pappas didn't get back there if they still have a timeout. And this is the last ball. And Davin turns it over. On in the jar. Fires into the short side. 
And in three good hard-fought games coming down to the last ball, Hunting and Ajar and Trevor Park defeat and eliminate Billy Pappas and David Maring. Well, folks, if you are just joining us, my name is Keith Glenn, and this is Inside Foos' coverage of the 2024. Been doing pretty good with that all weekend. Kentucky State Championships. So uh, Tom Robinson asking me if we're done. It's almost 2 o'clock. I can't imagine they're going to call another match here. Um, they, there's, um, they haven't called a match in over 30 minutes. That's at least still playing. So I'm going to go ahead and guess that we're done here, folks. I need to go to bed anyway. It's been a long day calling foosball matches. So I'm going to go ahead and, well, let me text our promoter. Or Kristen, at least. I'm going to get an answer for you before I go shutting things off. Thank you, Ellen. I just saw that as I switched apps here on my phone. I see Kristen over there. I just need to go look at her phone. If they're doing another one, I'll hang out with you folks because I don't want to turn off the stream and have anybody miss anything, but it certainly appears as if we are done. Taking a quick peek at the flyer. Expert double still going. I don't know what I was trying to motion to Candy. I don't know how to pantomime that uh, Trevor and Honey won. But our last day of events kicks off tomorrow morning. Junior singles, then bookie doubles at 11. Then pro doubles at 1. So I may be, you may, uh, I'll see if I can get somebody to fill in for me. Maybe Hannah will hop in here before pro doubles starts. But uh, I'm going to be busy with that rookie doubles event. So... Still got rookie doubles, pro doubles, beginner doubles, and the conclusion of open doubles to look forward to tomorrow, as well as expert doubles. So we still got plenty of good foosball to come your way. I still have not received an answer as to whether or not we are done tonight. Try calling Kristen. You my mic here, folks. All right, folks, we are officially done for the evening. So thank you for hanging out with us. Just got confirmation that uh, no finals are scheduled for early. We resume at 11. The stream should be up and running by then. I will probably not be in the booth, but you'll be able to tune in and watch. Once again, thank you. Thank you to all our subscribers, and thank you to everybody that hung out with us here on YouTube and Twitch. Always love that audience engagement. And once again, this has been Inside Foos' coverage of the 2024 Kentucky State Championships. My name is Keith Glenn. I'm wishing you guys a good night, and we will see you tomorrow.